boys and girls, I think a little birdie told me that we might have some stuff to talk about today. I have a feeling, <laughs> I have a feeling there might be some stuff to talk about today. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Uh, if, if you've been living under a rock, uh, the Alpha is launching this week. Some of the bigger, more prominent content creators have been playing it for a few days, secretly. Uh, the the, the one thing, one thing that amuses me greatly is um, just how clearly bad some people are at lying, which, you know, is a good thing. There's some, some, some content creators that were doing uh, very poor jobs of lying. I think, <laughs> I think the best approach for a lot of these people would have been to just, you know, disappear for three days and come back after it's all done and an NDA is lift and it goes public. But it was quite, quite funny to watch yesterday. Some, uh, some very, very poor poker faces out there. It meant everybody knew what was going on, of course. But it does mean we have a huge amount to talk about today. Now, I'm going to get some auctions listed. And uh, we are going to then change that because that doesn't really make any more sense, does it? Uh, uh, disclaimer. I do not have alpha. I need to try and make that abundantly clear. We can do, we can even go as far as doing flipping. We can do a, uh, why is that? Okay, why is it most of the size of the screen but not all the size of the screen? We, we, can, we can do, look, I have all of my different WoW accounts. I have in development, there is no alpha on the list. There's there's nothing that there's there's no stream of privileges here, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but I uh, I was not I was equally not one of the ones who got to play alpha. So I'm um, I'm going to be absorbing information like a sponge today. I'm going to be sharing it with this with you guys as much as possible. Plus, there's the opportunity that <laughs> a lot of people have probably already done a huge amount of this. I saw the news go out yesterday and there was just like a vomit cloud of like content articles videos all sorts of stuff so I kind of half just took a step back yesterday and I was like right well let's take a step back let's give ourselves a minute let's sort of digest this in in detail I thought the best way to do this probably is to try and be a little bit more structured about it because of course there's going to be a huge amount to go through um war bands is one of the big ones I want to talk about today because we've actually had like official from blizzard sort of info on this um and some of it is quite spicy some of it was very spicy very spicy indeed. It was nice going through the BlizzCon video with you to, with you yesterday. Well, hopefully there'll be a little bit more of that today. This isn't true to my normal way of streaming, but on the premise that I don't and haven't had access directly to Alpha myself, um, a bit of React Andy style uh, content is is uh, is needed over the next few days. I think. Can I borrow two point five million gold for the Warband final tab, please? Have you seen the amount of gold that's on my bank character right now? Uh, even my bank character couldn't afford to uh, cap out at the moment. That's because a lot of my gold is other places, but... Um, that did surprise me. <laughs> it definitely surprised me. I suspected that they were... We, I think we even said yesterday on stream... I think, thank you for the follows, by the way, boys and girls. I appreciate them. I don't shout out each and every single follow because I know some people like that, some people don't. Um, but thank you for the follows. The um, 
We even guessed yesterday that they would probably charge us a gold amount for the tabs. Um, now, I didn't make any predictions to how much they were going to cost because that was only a guess in and of itself. Clearly, that was a good, solid guess. Uh, but I would probably not have suspected they were going to charge quite that much. We'll, t we'll dive into this in a little bit, though. We'll dive into this in a little bit. I've got to get some auctions listed. I want to get the basic retail stuff out of the way, and then we can just hardcore al alpha farm all day. Hardcore alpha farm all day. Spent all my money on transmogging between every quest or dungeon that I do. People's transmog bills probably get quite expensive. Uh... You kind of, uh, it's the it's the microtransaction model again at play. Oh, a thousand gold here, a few thousand gold there. Doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference. Um, but then by the time you've been playing for like a calendar month and you've realized you've spent 80, 90,000 gold on just changing your character's appearance, it's like, oh my God, that's before you even consider buying any appearances. Slide into Holly's DMs for some alpha access. Uh, I Yeah, I do need to just be a touch more shameless about it. It's not in my nature. This is the problem. I find it very awkward. I find it very weird asking for things. Um, but it might be the only way that I actually get some access to this. I might need to stalk a few, st stalk a few devs. Pretend to be your PA and do it. No worries. <laughs> I need... Uh, yeah, I... I um, it's historically something I'm terrible at. IRL, I'm terrible at asking for help. I don't ask people for help for anything. If I can't do it myself, I deem it not something that's worth doing in many cases. Um, which probably is kind of why my decision to go entrepreneur, self-employed, kind of makes a little bit of sense. But um, we'll see, we'll see. Can't wait to hear your thoughts on the crafting within the War Within and the order systems. Well, there's already some... Obviously, data mining has been going on. Data mining is a thing. Um, we're starting to see, not first-hand, but second-hand through places like Wowhead, a lot of what the materials are going to be. Some initial answers to some of our questions, things about quality on materials, seems to still be a thing. There is some subtle rumours floating around. I've not looked into them in too much detail, but rumours that inspiration might have actually been changed. Um, the one thing I did note from yesterday is there was almost, almost zero coverage of any of the profession stuff, which is a good and a bad thing, depending on how greedy of a goblin you are. It's a good thing, because if nobody's talking about it, nobody, no, nobody's too interested in it, meaning that only the people that do really enjoy it might actually care about it to do it. One of the problems I still think, I can't quantify this, I can't prove this in any way, but one of my problems I think with Dragonflight and the crafting system is every motherfucker did it, right? Absolutely everybody played with professions, at least to some degree at some point, right? Um, in terms of the fact that it was new, it was like a feature, it was an expansion level feature, it was the profession overhaul, everybody had a go, um, everybody having a go caused 10 times the amount of people to be crafting things than probably would normally be, uh, and hence why it's been pretty difficult to make any sizable amount of gold from it because the competition is just like outrageous. Um, probably a PR move not to talk about it much. Well, you you know, they uh, Blizzard are usually very coy about talking about things that either aren't ready or aren't complete or are not. I mean, it's the launch of the alpha. Of course, they're going to talk raids. Of course, they're going to talk dungeons. Of course, they're going to talk delves, you know. Um, it's a new expansion. It has new headline features. So crafting is no longer a headline feature. Kalani mentioned a small bit about the professions on this video this morning. I'd, uh, I've queued up. I've queued up ahead of time a bunch of videos 
to have a little bit of a look at to try and extract some information from them with. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Kalani's one is one of those, but I think he's just published another one like half an hour ago, hasn't he? About alts, yeah. Yeah, you can't really talk about alts and not talk about the professions too much, but yeah, okay. That can probably be added to the list as well. I feel like Mr. GM spoke very briefly about it, suggesting it wouldn't change much, but there might be NPC orders to help people skill up. That's all I can remember. Yeah, I asked him. I asked him myself. Um, I asked him myself. I was lurking in his stream a little bit yesterday whilst doing some other stuff. Uh, the thing is, is like I said, it's not a headline feature. It's it without it being a headline feature, it's very unlikely that many people would have taken time. Um, this is why people like Mister GM are actually pretty good to have in the alpha because he has a very different approach to the game. Um, lots of top end Mythic Plus guys, lots of top end raiding guys, a splattering of PvP guys. You know, they, these are sort of the predominant content creators for the game. And so, of course, they're going to be lined to their speciality, right? Um, student was uh, student had alpha access, for reference, uh, the closest to, you know, Goblin. Um, student had alpha access and put a video out on it yesterday. <laughs> I did spot, actually. I wonder if I can showcase this. I don't know if Studen did this deliberately or not, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did, because it's exactly the type of thing he would do. Studen's very good at the YouTube game, right? He's very He understands the YouTube game. Uh, if we look at the... the, the look, right, so... Oh, okay, it's not going to show it now, because it's been too long. Everybody, the, the, the embargo lifted. The embargo lifted at, like on the hour, right? And everybody had queued up their videos. Towley had about 500 videos queued up. Everybody queued up all of their videos to launch and go live on the hour. Student, knowing that everybody else did that, scheduled his video to go live one minute past the hour. <laughs> now, I don't know if that was deliberate or, or, or a happy accident, but it meant that students' video was top of the subscription list on top of everybody else's that launched on the hour. I had about 50 videos in my YouTube subscribe list all of a sudden. Uh, but students was the top because he, he published it one minute later. <laughs> I'm not sure if he did it deliberately, but it wouldn't surprise me. He, he does the YouTube game very well. Undercutting works, exactly. It's goblin brain. It's like, uh, I know what you did here. That's very clever. <laughs> 100% agree there. He's the only one that went into molten core. Yeah, like Mr. GM is going to go and do weird and wacky stuff to try and find weird and wacky stuff out, which is kind of the concept of like game testing. You are predominantly supposed to do things that you wouldn't normally do necessarily do in order to find things that maybe haven't necessarily been thought about that may be working or not working or whatever the case may be so we will see we will see first real expansion with the region wide auction house as well without um it's yeah it's going to be interesting I, it's to my understanding, it's not going to be totally 100% region-wide auction house, but the flexibility of warbands is going to give people the ability to technically buy things from wherever they want and sell things wherever they want without much of an issue um, utilizing the warband bank. So it's kind of one step closer to fully region-wide auction house, unless there is some news that I'm not aware of that it's actually going to be fully full, but I don't think it is. Um, all questions regarding whether I have access, please see the disclaimer. <laughs> please see the disclaimer. 
they're working towards it. I believe I saw Ian say, yeah, that well, I mean, it's their ultimate goal. It's clearly their ultimate goal, but there's, there's probably issues, technical issues that they have to overcome to make it happen. And it's a priority thing, right? It's probably one of those things, a fully region-wide auction house would be a nice to have, but it's not a... Uh, it's it's not strictly a, you know. No alpha access yet. I would put that up. Well, I do not have alpha. That's I, I don't know how clearer I could be. I do not have alpha. Uh, for reference, to my understanding at least, invites haven't even gone out yet, but they are they're they're expected to. Right, retail in regards to bank character is done. Whilst people filter their way in, let's ever so quickly do some do some quick dailies to work towards the meta achievement. Would you be standing in Ogrima if he had alpha? Probably not, no. My coffee tastes different today. Why does my coffee taste different? I think it was the, uh, I think I accidentally had left the bag of coffee like open and it's like aired out and it's, it's not as clean anymore. Real leaked, real name leaked. I think people, I think a fair few people know my real name. It's fine. Your real name is my fourth name? Flipping how many names do you have, Jack? Jack the Dipper. There's three. <laughs> There's three. Uh, right, a little daycare stuff I want to get out of the way because this is, this is probably, like, in a weird way, this is actually probably the main thing that's holding me back on this meta achievement now. Um, ass... I can run some mythic dungeons wherever, whenever I need. I just need to brute force a raid finder queue to do this. Um, Army of the Fed is clearly just waiting for the right flipping fishing hole to be open. Uh, Siege, I need to feed 11 more beef snacks to a big frog, which can in theory be done every hour or so. Then it's daycare stuff. I need, yeah, I need to chip away as much as possible on this daycare stuff. Uh, what's Horde of the Forbidden Reach? I'll fly around, pick up a bunch of treasures. That's just a... That's, 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 that's called a Sunday afternoon whilst watching the UFC achievement. That's, that's what that is. Uh... Uh, Max Holloway, the goat, by the way, still in amazement from that fight. Uh, librarian, we've just got to get the right book. That's a case of going into the vault, using the magical thing, seeing if the book is there. I do plan to not do too much retail stuff today, but today is probably a good day to do some of it because I don't actually have true alpha access anyway. So, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Anaran Plains, Earth. No, I need Anaran Plains, Snow. Stupid, stupid. Airstorm in Thaldrassus. I need Firestorm. Damn you, game. Never lucky. At least we've got two, at least we've got two storms up again now. I'm glad they fixed this again. This should mean that it should be more manageable. Tell some dude to smell Sir Pringley.
S- sniff the sniff the porcupine. I still believe they're going to change recipes patterns from being bind on pickup to bind on account warbound with 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 the war within. It's going to be interesting. This is one question I have about the rep changes. We know that the reputations are going to be uh, warbound wide. For reference, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and can use the right terminology. Um, even Ian Hazacostis himself has practically said that account and warbound are kind of interchangeable terms nowadays. Uh, or so, in essence, what they're trying to do is is deflect people's use of the word account wide to being warbound, warbound wide. Um, one thing I do wonder with the reputations being warband wide is how is that going to interact with profession recipes when you unlock stuff? Presumably, there will just be a date in which people will be able to get the reputation and then that recipe will just be available. Collecting recipes across multiple professions can only be much easier. Uh, it You're not going to have to... Re- because you can't repeatedly grind reps, right? You can't repeatedly grind reps by the looks of things of how they're staging it. The, the, the highest rep you have with any single character is the rep that you have with all the other characters. So in terms of recipes... No longer will you have to level up one to get the tailoring recipe and then level that faction again to get the ins- on another character to get the inscription recipe. Um, it might mean that it allows goblins to play significantly more professions in one go. Because if you level up the profession, any profession recipes that are, are locked behind that reputation, you can have access to them on all of your characters as soon as you can. Um, so it's going to make the... It would, in theory, make the the markets a lot s- snappier. There's always been this kind of like... there's the, there's the There's always that scribe who does the thing first and gets the contract first... And then everybody else slowly catches up to it. But now it might be more that anything that's locked behind reputation is is actually more going to be everybody gets at the same time and then boom, it's off. Already read that I can cheese the reps. Uh, can't cheese the reps. They have some big brain in the office already. <laughs> well, the human racial is disappearing, apparently. Um, the hu- uh, From what I've seen, the human racial is disappearing. The ten percent rep bonus for humans is disappearing. There's uh, they're also going to make rep gains on quests a one-time account-wide, warband-wide reward. And once, even if you do the quest again on another character, for example, the reputation will switch out to like the equivalent of Dragon Isle supplies. You know, like the expansion wide currency. We've had Anima previously, we've got Dragon Isle supplies now. There seems to always be this kind of overarching expansion wide micro currency. Um, rep gains will get switched out in place of those, I think. What are we getting in return? Well, that's what we don't know yet. I'm sure they'll tell us at some point. Uh, who am I finding? Where are you? Are you upstairs? You're upstairs. Somebody who doesn't play a human, it's a good change. Yeah, I kind of... um, I was never a fan, even though I fully utilised it, because why wouldn't you? But I was never a fan of this kind of weird level an alt, preferably a human alt, to a certain threshold. So then you could go and do all of that again on your main character and gain a rep boost by doing it. The clever use of game mechanics, the gamer doing gamer things approach to reputations in Dragonflight was was a bit gross. Um, it was far too gamery 
And more importantly, it was one of those things that like those that had those that implemented the correct strategy were miles ahead of people that just played a single character. Um, so it was it was a bit weird. I mean, it's 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 one of those, right? The reputations, the renowned grinds in Dragonflight, by design, didn't matter that much whether you did them straight away or whether it took you six months to do them. Um, but the reality is, a lot of this stuff, you just kind of you want to get it done when your focus is on doing it. Especially like when they launch a new patch, they launch a new patch, and there's that kind of week or so where you have the new zone to play with, but you don't have the new season hasn't launched. You haven't got Mythic Plus. You haven't got the raids. So people want to do the thing in that week, right? They want to get it finished in that week if they can <clears throat> so that it's done, so that it doesn't overlap with more fun stuff. Um, and so hence why gamers do gamer things. Honestly, just let us pick the racials to have. I mean, it would require quite an overhaul. But the cons... I, I think one thing that might happen eventually... Maybe not necessarily right now, but maybe they might at one point uh, consider your race to be somewhat like your transmog per se. So you take your priest and then you can, you know, just as you can change your appearance, you can also change your race. I mean, it's 2024. You can change whatever you want nowadays, apparently. Um... So maybe maybe it might be something eventually that you can just interchange, swap and change your race as 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 you feel. If you you know if you, if this raid you need to, you, you know you need the goblin racial or you need the you know whatever. Maybe I don't know. It's a thought. Surgery next to the barber shop. Yeah. Hang on, go back to the beginning. Click here if no daily quests available. No daily quest available. Huh, wait, hang on. No, that's a lie. Or have I done it? Was that literally all I could do today? Except scaly pet. I don't think this Zygor guide works very well for this this little event. Uh, I don't actually have any more. No, okay, that was the daycare stuff for today. A light day, a quick and easy day. Well, we probably need one of those based upon the amount of reacts we have to do for the rest of the day. Dragonbane Keep, not for an hour 33. Can somebody try and give me a semi-active heads up for when this thing is going to start? I need phase one stuff. I need to, f I need to, uh, I need to give, give, give the big frog some, some beef snacks. Ah, speak of the devil. How are we doing, Dan? Welcome in. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Nice alpha. Hey, nothing but alpha over here. Nothing but alpha. Right, that I think is about as much retail as I can stomach now. Time to, time to extract Wowhead for everything it's worth. <laughs> Can I ban Mr. GM? He's so rude. No, no, you may not, Jack. <laughs> no, you may not. Keep your ban hammer in your pocket. Right. Let's, uh, probably the one thing that intrigues me more so than anything else. Well, actually, let's start with the, the, the actual, the warbands preview. Um, 
I will, uh... Read and received. Um, I want to take a little bit of a look at the Warbands preview because this is this is this is interesting. This is definitely very interesting. Um, official Blizzard feedback on a new system is probably the best source of information we have right now until we can get in there and have a little bit of a look at things. Um, so to play. To play, uh, to play a level of organised, let's start at the beginning and try and catch a few people up if needs be. For starters, what even are Warbands? Warbands is new to the War Within. It's practically the replacement for the word account, right? All of your characters, whether they play on whatever server they play, on whatever faction they play, are all going to be, you are going to be a Warband now. You are going to be a big warband and you are going to have all of your characters available to you um, in a much more simplistic way. This is, seems to be stage one of them slowly but surely just removing the sort of you play on this server, you play on this server business. Every expansion we've had for the last few has slowly pushed us to be able to just play with anybody more. And I think now going into War Within, the only real limitation is going to be team na team eu um pretty much anything else you're going to be able to freely play with whoever you want and all of your characters will be at your fingertips at all times in a much quicker and easier way which is cool which is cool um so the new warband system enco will encompass all of the characters on your battle.net account as well as all of their items their collections and the progression that they share uh it is important to note that your warband is still limited to characters within a single region this was one of our big questions what they're going to do about the regions now i know it's possible to have on one battle.net account both eu and na accounts um I would presume then you would just have two, it's just two separate warbands, right? Let's say you've got four EU accounts, four NA accounts. You just have all of the characters in, in, in two different warbands, I would guess. Um, Many aspects of World of Warcraft have been shared across your account for a long time, essentially a warband. This includes your collection of your pets, your mounts, your transmogs, your heirlooms, and more. With the release of Warbands, we're significantly expanding what additional aspects of the game have Warband integration. Just to name a few things, reputations and renown tracks are going to be Warband-wide. Expect this phrase a thousand times today. A new Warband bank will allow you to easily store and share items between your characters, the ability to collect most appearances with any character in your warband, regardless of their ability to equip the gear. This is sort of leading into the transmog change that we've sort of we've sort of seen a little bit. Can you choose a background for your character selection screen? And please tell us to f off if you're just waking up. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit early in the UK. It's probably only just gone nine o'clock in the UK. But 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 Daddy GM has has small child who's probably had him awake for hours. So. <laughs> um, yeah, this is still restricted as far as I'm I'm aware right now. It would be cool if you could change this location though. We came up with a theory yesterday on stream that the the uh, the what do you call it the flipping Volpera camp thing. If you had a button similar to the Volpera camp where you could set your warband location and then your your splash screen would be that location. Um, I don't know exactly how that would work, but I think that sort of theory could be quite cool as a nice-to-have feature in the future. I wonder if you have to pay $3 million for warband bank and the reagent bank, so $6 million in total to get all the slots. Uh, just quickly diving ahead then, just ever so quickly, diving ahead, we will go through all of this in a minute, diving ahead, 
this is basically what your bank is now, right? You have your bank and you have your reagent bank. Um, they are changing the default bank interface, but you already have your reagent bank. This is just an additional tab onto the default banking sort of interface. So you have your bank. They're changing bank the bank from being lots of bags to tabs, much like this. So your guild bank, your personal bank, and your reagent bank, and your warband bank. And I guess kind of maybe possibly even your void storage. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen with void storage. Um, they're all going to have this, they're all going to look very similar. They're sort of unifying the look of them all. But you've already got your reagent bank. Uh, 99 mil or 999 mil the cap I don't know whatever it is we got to get it though we got to get it I've had this weird uh, it's stupid it's very stupid but I've had this kind of um I've had this kind of weird habit throughout all of World of Warcraft. I've liked to have had gold cap in every expansion. Um, now, obviously, currently the gold cap is 10 million, so that's been quite achievable. Um, if they up the, if they up it to 100 million, or they up it to a billion, we got work to do. We got work to do for sure. Four to the 31. I don't even know what that is. I, I mean, I, I like my maths, but that's actually ridiculous. First step towards player housing, deciding your warband location. That, that, could most, that could definitely be the first step. Although I still am not convinced uh, that we will ever go to get any form of player housing, unfortunately. Um, but that was skipping quite ahead. Let's, I, I said I wanted to try and, you know, systematically go through this, try and keep some sort of structure and order to it. So let's, uh, let's try and keep on track. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um... So the goal of the warband system then, what is the warband system actually meant to sort of meant, meant to do for us? Before getting into the details of the changes that players will experience with warbands, we want to share the main goals that we are aiming to accomplish with the system's introduction. Uh, make playing alts easier and more enjoyable. Data has shown that many players already have an alt or two. <laughs> Clearly they didn't pull much data from the, uh, from the casual community. Because I don't know anybody that has an alt or two. Um, definitely more close to this 10 number. Uh, I, I've, uh, I even know... I don't think I could count them on two hands, the amount of people that have full accounts of alts. Like 60 on a single account. I also know people who have a full battle net. You can have eight accounts, right? Five and three. Eight accounts on a single battle.net. I know multiple people who have all eight of those accounts, all 60 characters on all of them. Um, it is ungodly the amount of alts that some people have. Maybe not necessarily all maxed up to level 70. There's a couple I know that have. Um, but yeah, people are pretty alt crazy in this game nowadays. And I think that's by proxy of the fact that leveling's been so quick over the last few years. You can level a character from zero to hero in like an afternoon if you really want to. So yeah, alt friendliness, big, big thumbs up. Love some of that, love some of that. Switch between characters without falling behind. We talked about this a minute ago with the reputations. There's always going to be a lot of character specific progression in World of Warcraft, such as your high end gearing. But when it's appropriate, 
moving progression into your warband should allow you to freely pe freely play multiple characters without losing efficiency or long-term progress. This is really cool. Um, you kind of feel stuck playing one character when a patch launches. If you're doing sort of like the new zone or something, you feel as if you need to do everything in that new zone on one character. And if you choose to do it again with alts, but now I hope this means that because the way that rep is going to build, that the first time you complete a quest on any character, you get the rep bonus. Um, and it all goes into one pool of rep. Uh, it might mean that, oh, well, you know, today I want to play on my hunter, but you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to try out the new paladin stuff and I'm going to go do some stuff in that zone as well on my paladin. Uh, and then, you know, the day after that, maybe I want to jump on the priest and, and, and test some of the new priest abilities. And you could do your dailies on three different characters, uh, yet still progress uh, at, at full efficiency, which would be really nice. This is that's going to be really, really beneficial, I think. Crafted gear not having quality is good. Hang on, hang on. I'm catching up with chat here. Crafted gear not having quality is good. I don't think we strictly know that that's the case now. Some early info seems to indicate that there is still quality knocking about all over the place with professions. Maybe they've toned it down a little bit where things have quality. I did notice not all of the new materials seem to have quality on them. Um, but maybe we'll see, we'll see. Going to have to start deleting to make space for pandemonium leveled alts and Drakthir everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do, in a weird way, I do hope they hope they increase from 60. The thing is, is I'm not, in, I'm not too sure... I'm really not too sure what the benefit of having a cap is. But the thing is, you know, whatever they make the cap, people will hit it, right? Like, if they make the cap 100 characters, there'll be people with 100 characters. If you make the cap 500 characters, there'll be people with 500 characters. I don't think there's any... Short of having just no cap, which you can't really do. You've got, you've got to put some limit. Um, just because of how these systems work. Um, you know, there's a gold cap for a reason, right? It's, uh, even though it's a silly high number for most people, there's a cap there for a reason. I don't know what they could possibly do about that, but yes, deleting characters feels awkward for those, for those real altaholics. But I don't, I, don't, I don't know how they can fix that problem. They're continuing with how crafting worked in Dragonflight. Only exception, there will now be NPCs who put up crafting orders. This is what Ian has said. There will probably be a few uh, tweaks. They, I mean, this is, they, they said that back at BlizzCon. Some of the interviews back from BlizzCon, they sort of basically said that crafting is just staying the same. They're not making any significant sweeping changes. Um, but they're sort of smoothing the rough edges, I guess, is a good way to describe it, I think. Um, I will certainly be a big advocate for, like, maybe a few tweaks to stat balancing. Uh, <coughs> inspiration, I'm looking at you. Um, but that's the kind of details we need to get hands-on with the system and have a little bit of a look at, really. Uh, acknowledge the player behind the screen. This is something they've been trying to do for a while, but it now may, may be something that they actually achieve with the warband system. So in other words, wherever possible, we want to celebrate your accomplishments with your warband, not only your character. So you can carry those accomplishments with you to whichever character you choose to play. Um, yeah, making, making you the human being that's actually playing the game and paying the subscription... <laughs> Uh, making it so that, you know, if you do something on one character, you can, you can, you can reap the rewards of that wherever you need to, regardless to whether you arbitrarily decide to stop playing that priest and start playing a mage or something. So, um, clarify which aspects of the game are account wide versus character specific. It hasn't always been clear which part of the game, which parts of the game 
apply to your character versus your account. We've taken this opportunity to clarify these differences in the UI, as well as replacing the term account with warband throughout the game. Yeah, so here we go. They've, they've kind of interchanged. The account level usage is practically... They've just changed the language, right? They've predominantly changed the language to warband, um, which is good as long as all of the old rules apply. Um, right, let's dive into a few more of the actual nitty-gritty details then. So we've got conversions. This is a big one. Um, one of the major undertakings of warbands is to convert aspects of the game which are currently character-specific uh, to being warband-wide. Conversion progress is being developed to run automatically upon your first login with the War Within pre-patch. This means players won't need to log in to won't need to log in to each character for the conversion. There may be some wait time for the system to process your warband upon your first login, however. Please be patient whilst this occurs as it involves processing a lot of data. Oh dear lord have mercy. I hope that works. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Uh that's gonna be a fun one. Um, I suppose it's good that players won't have to log into every character. But there was always a reason why we had to log into every character. The reason we had to log into every character was to refresh variables, presumably, in the databases that are attached to your characters. How are they going to... Maybe, maybe, they're, maybe this is a two-step pro process maybe they're changing the way that all of this information is stored behind the scenes in the databases and then when pre-patch launches they just take all of that information and merge it into one launch day is gonna hurt Launch day hurts anyway. Uh, the, the, this, this to note is the pre-expansion patch. This is the, when the pre-patch goes live. This is when the 11.0 patch goes live, which is obviously before the actual official launch date of the expansion. So I'd, um, I'd hope that th this is why they do pre-patches, right? They do pre-patches deliberately. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember when 10, no, 9.0, 2.7 I think launched when they had the region wide merger go live that went live way before Dragonflight actually went live and they do a lot of that sort of systemy stuff early because they know that when you know the release date of the expansion and every man and their dog logs on um, servers get crushed as enough as it is they want to make sure that a lot of the system stuff has been implemented tested smoothed out before the launch they learned that from uh garrisons i think garrisons taught them a lot about they should use pre-patches for system changes um because they didn't do that with garrisons and everybody logged in and then nobody could play their garrison for about a week <laughs> which which didn't do them any favors Hopefully they have good backup for the databases. Risky moment as they will probably change a lot in their database systems. I hope so. There's just there's there's somebody at Blizzard running around with a flash drive. Ah! <laughs> just plugging it into USBs. <laughs> it could be chaos. It could be quite funny though. Uh, Warband reputation. So once the War Within launches, most new and many Dragonflight reputations will become Warband reputations. When you've got a Warband, when you when you have a Warband reputation, any progress you make on one character will be shared with all your characters. Rewards will also be unlocked for all characters, although the form this takes will vary per reward. The form this takes will vary per reward. Okay. Warband-wide rewards will be granted only once, while some rewards will remain character-specific and need to be collected on each character. Now, the character-specific stuff, we're a bunch of, bunch of filthy goblins around here, so as a bunch of filthy goblins, 
the thing that a lot of us look for is the recipes for our professions, right? Those are clearly character specific because may, maybe it maybe the vendor will only show you the ability to buy those recipes if you have the represented profession as well. Um, but in theory, it does mean soon as you reach a threshold, right? Let's say your let's say your your new healing potion is locked behind renown ten. It doesn't theoretically mean. It doesn't matter how you get to Renown 10, but as soon as you hit Renown 10, you should be able to log on to your Alchemist and go and buy that recipe in theory. That's how it sounds to me. Um, they've clearly taken this decision to remove a lot of like player power -y stuff from the Renown paths and the reps anyway. So surely that isn't going to be too problematic. What I do wonder... What I do wonder is rewards will also be unlocked for all characters. Da, 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 da. Uh, Warband wide rewards will be granted only once. What happens if you have two alchemists? This has always been the question, right? Like Dracothis. Dr Dracothis is a good example of this. Alchemists would run around. Like, how much time did people spend leveling up alchemy on a bunch of alts? then doing everything they needed on said alt to get the rep they needed to buy the recipe for Dracothist. Um What happens if you can only buy the Dracothist recipe once for one alchemist? I don't know. I'm sure, sure, surely they wouldn't do that. Surely they wouldn't do that. But it does mean that those people that have 50 alchemists can instantly, once they get the renown, they can instantly get 50 recipes on 50 alchemists. Maybe they just remove, because cooldown, you know, stuff that's on a cooldown. Do we think it worked in Dragonflight? Do we think the do, do we think the transmutes? Do we think the cooldown stuff really functioned as expected? Considering every time they implemented it, it was broken. Maybe maybe they just will remove will, will go in a different direction. Maybe who knows? Who knows? We will see. We will see. A warband wide cooldown. Well, that is something that could work. That could definitely work if they are pushing more stuff. Like, this, this is why I'm intrigued, right? The Warband stuff sends a lot of questions off in my head about how the professions are going to work because one of the common things for people to do is to have... With the, with, with, the, with the knowledge trees, for example, it was not uncommon for people to, like, level two blacksmiths, one that focuses on weapons, one that focuses on gear, um, so that they get... They double dip. They get the best of both worlds. They become very good at crafting both of things. It doubled the amount of work for them to do it, but there was a reason why they did it. The more stuff they push account-wide, then maybe one of the things that also needs to be pushed account-wide is some sort of cooldowns on items that are meant to have a limit to how many can be crafted. Intrigued. Intrigued. More questions than answers. I love this time of the year. I, I love when we get new patches and stuff like this and we can start digging through all of this sort of stuff. I just really hope that they think of this kind of thing earlier than a few weeks before launch. This is why alpha is important. Uh, I, I've, I've said it repeatedly that alpha is the time to break this shit apart and figure this sort of stuff out and get that feedback in. Um, the sooner you can get that feedback in, the, the, the better, honestly, because you're... You're, you 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 run the risk of the you know when beta turns up beta's just bug fixing you know it's too late by the time beta's around the, the by the time we get to see beta the the the, the expansion's launching next week um it's too, it's too too late at that point um alpha's the time to like get the solid feedback in you know has it been confirmed that the old reps will be merged they seem to be focusing on dragonflight reputations to begin with um, but with the des but with the desire to retro apply this to all of the past expansions, there's a bit more details on that in a minute. Um, 
Once a reputation is converted to warband wide, reputation progress will display as the furthest that any character on your account has achieved. So say you were renowned 5 with the Valdraken Accord on one character and renowned 10 on another, your new warband Valdraken Accord renown would be 10. So the, the greatest level of progress you've made on any single character will be what your warband uh, rep becomes. <clears throat> We opted for the further furthest progress earned because for many reputations, progress is not earned evenly. You can earn a lot of front-loaded reputation by doing campaigns and other one-shot quests. The thought behind this was that if we added all of your reputation earned across all of your characters together, like stacking them on, you know, three renown here and three renown here equals six renown, um that it would create an unfair advantage for those who have played many alts and who spend their time on just one or a few characters. So the highest progress, the highest progress you have achieved on one single character is what your warband rep will be. Um, now, if you're smart about it, in the next few months, you'll just cap everything anyway. Just get everything done, right? Like reputation doesn't take a lot of, uh, it, it doesn't take a huge amount of time now. Um, honestly, if you've been working on things like the, the meta achievement, there's a good chance you have all of this capped anyway. Um, make a human, just go for it. Yeah. Get the 10% rep bonus in nice and quick. Yeah. Um, here's the full list of converted reps regarding dragon flight. So they've done most of the big ones, right? Dragon scale expedition, centaurs, tuscars, Valdraken accord, the Niffin and the dream wardens. And then the standard ones as well, Rathian Sabellian, Cobalt Assembly, Artisans Consortium, as a Rothian Archives, the only one I still need to finish, and Zeridormi. Uh So the little, the, the sub ones as well. For a few reputations, we opted not to convert them. The Winter Pelt Furbog and the Glimmerog Racer were due to not fitting within the fantasy for those reputations. Okay. Furbogs have the language learning component that doesn't make much sense to be shared across the characters. Okay. And the Glimmerog racer reputation feels more like a personal standing in the snail races rather than an actual reputation that should be shared. These are also minor reputations that wouldn't be as impactful warband wide anyway. Well, true, 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 true. Get your ass out there, level of human. Get it on. For as long as the racial still exists, uh, the human racial is disappearing, by the way. The 10% human racial is going bye-bye at some point. Soon, TM. <clears throat> right, I just need to ever so quickly check something. Uh, before we go too far. Uh, uh, why do, why does Discord make this so goddamn annoying to do? Okay, I'm going to have to assume it's fine. The reflection in your glass is you is you installing alpha? No, I am definitely not. I can give you I can I can showcase there is no alpha on my list. It does not exist. Relax. Right, it's fine. Quasi has said that there'll be a crafting order NPC vendor when there isn't any real crafters. Yeah, there's a f there's there's some early indication that there'll be that there'll be uh, NPC work orders to smooth over the the lack of orders holding back people's progression with the professions. 
Um, right, this is this is this is something that's going to be quite key to how you level up your reputations and in turn have access to all of the good stuff that they offer. Um, part of your warband reputation implementation is satisfying the goal that players with many alts don't have an intrinsic advantage over those who focus their playtime on a single character. E.g. meaning that you can't farm things on alts to get ahead, get ahead of the curve, right? Um, to accomplish this, we're introducing a new concept with the quest rewards. Players can earn a bonus quest reward for any quest completed for the first time on their warband. In addition, different bonuses can be granted for completing that those quests additional times. So this sort of this little screen here sort of shows as a bonus little symbol here, saying that it, you will get the reputation with the Council of Dornogal one time. Right. This then, if you do whatever this quest is again, you'll still get the gold on your alts. You'll still get the relevant piece of gear on the alts. Um, but this will swap out to be something that's not rep. It will swap out to be something else. The most common way we anticipate granting this bonus uh, in the War Within quest is when rewarding Warband reputation. Specifically, we plan for quests to only give reputation as the first time completion bonus. We as big time crafters would understand this because we had the first craft bonus. The first time you crafted something, you got your you got your knowledge point from it, but it didn't matter if you leveled up that. Uh, it, you don't. You could. It doesn't matter if you then crafted that thing a second, a third, or fourth time. You could only get the one knowledge point from it. So they've kind of expanded that, expanding that out to sort of all quests as well for rep. <clears throat> uh, on additional completion of the same quests, players will earn a bonus reward. Bonus reward currency similar to Dragon Isle supplies instead of the reputation. This currency will be freely transferable across the warband and can be used to purchase various warband level rewards, such as your cosmetics, your mounts, and your pets. Um, I think this is actually quite good. I think this kills two birds with one stone, you know, uh, because as a bit of an ATT fan, as a bit of an all the things fan, one thing I've been looking at recently is the amount of Dragon Isle supplies I have. Um... So I have a huge amount of Dragon Isle supplies on my main character, but on my alts, I have practically none. Um, yet on my alts, I, I, I can't go out and like do all of... I can't lore master on an alt to gain Dragon Isle supplies. I would still get the rep that doesn't make any difference to me. So having rep switch out to like something the equivalent of Dragon Isle supplies would mean that you can pick up that sort of expansion wide currency there'd be a way to sort of focus farm it a little bit more you could go and do the campaign again on an alt and probably get a whole boost of uh supplies which would be quite nice good for the collectors again this this the whole expansion and the whole warband thing seems to be seems to play in hand really nicely for the sort of the the, the people who just love collecting stuff this currency is to be freely transferable across the warband and can be used to purchase your cosmetics and such. With this setup, you can complete quests for any character you want without it impacting on your reputation or your progress. Whichever character completes them first will earn the reputation that goes towards your warband. This also avoids the situation in which a player who plays many characters can rapidly advance in reputation over somebody that only plays one character. This counteracts the... Hit Renown 10 on your human alt first to get the rep boost for your main so you can slingshot yourself to Renown 18 or something stupid. Uh, that was dumb. We did it because it worked, but it was dumb. Um, so it's nice, it's nice that they've sort of thought about that in a little bit more detail. Uh, talking of human racial, what about diplomacy? The human racial diplomacy is currently designed to grant a bonus 10% to reputation for players who choose that race. Unfortunately, with warband reputations, this racial causes problems due to its character-specific nature. We don't want players to feel compelled to play a specific character or a race to earn warband level rewards. 
more efficiently. So we will convert this race-specific bonus into something new. We'll share more information on it at a later date. Also known as, they haven't got a clue, but they know it's going away. <laughs> um, so Ripperoni 10% rep gain for your humans. Um, that said, if you have been utilizing a human for the 10% rep bonus and still have outstanding projects, maybe finish them before the expansion goes live. Um, I'll accept 10% extra gold from all sources. <laughs> true, true. I'd turn everybody into a goblin, uh, a human at that point. Um, achievements follow a similar pattern. Achievements have always had that account-wide component to them. Some achievements, the ones that have the blue shade on, are fully account-wide. Progress on these is shared across all of your characters and completion is for the entire World of Warcraft account. Um, there have also been character-specific achievements in which progress and completion of these is per character. These achievements show as complete if any character on the account has completed them. Often the rewards earned are also character-specific. In the past, we've displayed your account-wide achievement point total in some places, like at the top of your achievement panel. But... Uh, only your character total in other places, like guilds. I... I'm going to be brutally honest, I didn't even realise this. I've played the game for 20 years, didn't even realise there was two different numbers. Um, straight up, didn't even know. Um, with the introduction of Warbands, we want all of your achievements be, to be considered Warband achievements. You, the player, accom uh, uh, accomplish them. So you should not feel like you need to complete them on one or more character, or feel that you do not want to play another character because they are missing some achievements. I must admit, I've never felt that about achievements per se but sure given this we're eliminating the concept of a character-based achievement score completely from now on a total warband achievement score will be tracked and displayed instead this score will be the sum of all account-wide achievement points plus any of those from character specific achievement points on that character um <laughs> this is kind of how i thought it worked anyway um but today i learned we're also converting many achievements to be account-wide, approximately 2,000 from across all of the expansions. The philosophy we're following for this conversion is that if an achievement has the possibility of sharing progress across characters, we want it to convert so all characters can share the progress on it. It shouldn't matter whether you've returned 50 flags as a defender in Warsong Gulch on a single character or whether because you enjoy PvP on 10 characters and have done it five times on each. I guess that's good then, right? I guess that makes sense. I guess we like that. Um, removing, once again, the need to feel that you have to play this... Me I, I guess it goes some part to break down the barriers between main character that you do everything on first... And you feel locked into playing that one character regardless because you've done so much on that one character. And alts, right? Alts are just, you know, people play alts a lot more freely, a lot more willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. That's the most ridiculous English phrase I think I've ever said. Um, but people still have this, like, solid, blocked-off main character, right? Mine is my hunter. Um... My, my hunter is the character I will always do everything on first, and then if I can stomach doing it again on other characters, I will play the alts. But this should hopefully mean that it doesn't... It breaks down those barriers a little bit, which I like. I like that. Um, partly the reason why I've played a hunter for, like, over a decade straight is because I don't want... Didn't ever want to switch to another character because it would feel like starting again, um, which is weird. So I like these changes. I like these a lot. There are a few rare exceptions to this, however. Specifically for achievements where doing the activity on one character is part of what makes it harder. In yeah, insane, for example. Yeah. Uh, switching between the two factions is probably the reason there. Um, in addition, any character achievements that would not benefit from shared progression across characters, such as the Memories of Teldrassil, will be left character specific so you can see what cool things you've done on specific characters for posper posterity. But again, this will have no impact on your achievement score rewards or the ability to complete them. 
okay. Um, we're getting into like the world of exceptions here. The primary exception to awards being warband wide is those that are intrinsically per character, such as Dreaming of Worms. Okay. Another exception is achievements that celebrate highly prestigious accomplishments on a specific character, like the Gladiator achievements. Okay. To address how we progress for achievements across characters, most achievements we're adding your progress across all of your characters. So, for example, if you have done 200 personal crafting orders on each of three different characters, the personal crafter achievement will immediately be completed upon login. Oh, because it's a 500 achievement. 200 times 3 is 600, so it's saying that you've done enough on an account wide level to actually then get this okay so it will, it will it will add those up which is cool um there are a few achievements where it only makes sense to take the highest value across your characters such as the reach level 70 achievement in most cases these are not being converted as there's no real benefit for the exception where there are we will use the highest value you've reached on any character okay achievements are going account wide cool got it got it Noted. Tick. Shared flight points. Okay. Uh, no more maps. We're converting flight points to be account wide. For standard flight points, you have to, you have yet to learn. You will only have to collect these on one character and they'll be unlocked across all of your warband. Flight points that have already been collected on any character across your account will be unlocked automatically. Good. Something weird, there's always historically been something weird about discovering new flight points. I'm glad they've got rid of that. I'm glad they've nuked that. Um, preserving map expl exploration. Map exploration is an interesting subject to consider as we worked through how we wanted the warband system to work. Initially, a plan was in place to convert map exploration to something available account-wide. But after further reflection, we decided it was better to preserve the map exploration as it is. Uh, not only can it be fun to reveal new parts of a map, but it can provide experience and also help you keep track of areas that you've already explored. Or just use Zygor and Lawmaster Zones. Um, for those who may not be as interested in re-exploring every map on your character, we're adding a warband map to everywhere all at once. To wow! Wow! What a catchy name. What a catchy... The warband map to everywhere all at once toy. Nice. Does that... Is that so ridiculous as to make some sort of funny acronym or something? No, it's just a ridiculous name. Okay. Uh, sure. It is descriptive. It is... Oh, it refers to a movie, does it? It's a reference to a movie. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, of course. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I'm being dumb. Yeah, I see it now. I see it now. I knew there'd be some reason it was stupid long. Cool. Good, 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 good. Uh, no currency confusion. This is new. This, what could possibly go wrong with this? This I, I've already read this bit, by the way. But like, this worries me. Ah, worries me because I know this will get abused somehow. Uh, like map exploration, it was decided to handle currency a little bit differently. Rather than making it fully warband wide which could create potential confusion. We opted to make it easier to transfer currency between your characters in your warband instead. This will help avoid confusion over spending the wrong currency on the wrong character. Okay. Uh, with this new flow, instead of relying on buying a special item and then mailing it to your alt, you can directly transfer any shareable currency from one character to the other one you are currently playing within the currency user interface. Okay then. Okay. Currency is intended for purchasing warband-wide items such as cosmetics, pets and mounts. 
probably whatever the new Dragon Isle supplies end up being, um, pe- uh, will be will usually be completely free to transfer between any members of your warband. E.g., no tax, no Blizzard tax on the basic stuff that's kind of designed to be account wide in the first place. You will still collect it on your individual characters, but you can then freely transfer it. I'm confused to why they've taken this approach rather than just making these account-wide currencies. There must there must have been some technical limitations to making them fully account-wide currencies. Um, it seems very odd they've still chosen to have them on a per... I'm not sure. There's got... There's got to be some reason why they've done it this way and not just taken the leap straight to just making currencies account wide. Um, but anyway, we'll continue. Currencies intended. For, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There may be some cases in which a currency is earned on a character with the intent that that character will be the primary use of the currency. But where we want to allow players to shift any excess currency to an alternative character, in those cases, there will be a slight loss in the transfer of that currency. This is akin to older currencies in which this value loss was accompanied via an item purchase, such as Cosmic Flux from Shadowlands. Okay, so some tax. Some tax on some stuff. Um, So the differentiation seems to be if it's for buying cosmetic shit, you can just transfer it about however you please. If it's in any way, shape, or form linked to player power, there's going to be a tax on it. Um, if transferable at all, by the way. Note that there will still be many currencies that will remain non-transferable because they represent important character-based progression. Two examples of these are the Crest and the Flight Stone equivalents in The War Within. At least we know. At least we know. Enchanters have got something to do next expansion. Um, so yeah, I guess this is arguably better than having to find that random NPC uh, to buy the item to then mail it to somebody else. It's too, there's too there's, there's too many steps in the process that we have right here right now. This is technically a smoother process. And equally, this can probably be implemented like from day one. Or they can just switch this on at some point. Um, Because there's no denying, right, that people don't find these NPCs. Um, They don't make... They, they, they make these NPCs, they hit in, and if you if you miss the patch notes, it's, e- it's super, super mega easy to not know that that NPC even exists. Um, much like in uh, this dude down here, there's a lot of people... Where, where have they gone? Where have they gone? Uh, where have they gone? Is it you? No, it's not even you. Where is it? Where's the dude that allows you to transfer? This one, look. Apprentice Crafter. Uh, a currency conversion thing. Like, so many people, months and months and months after this was implemented, don't even know that this exists. Um, not that people are short on artisan's metal in any point, but um, it goes to show that, you know, people miss these things. They've made a new achievement just for you. What be this? What be this? A new achievement just for me. It's going to be something sweaty, something goal making y, surely. Master of all? <laughs> What's this then? Raise all primary professions to maximum skill points. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm all over that like a rash. Uh, alchemy, blacksmithing, enchanting, engineering, herbalism, inscription, jewel crafting, leatherworking, mining, skinning, tailoring. All the usual suspects. Yeah. Yeah, we've we've usually ticked to that box quite early on in most expansions. Oh, there's a set reward for it. The previous level has a set reward. Mastery of many.
Obtain maximum skill points in five professions. Appearance, formed artisans, talent ensemble. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. Formed artisans, talent. Civilian craft person, red set. Oh, there's a bunch of them, look. Hey, we're actually gonna, uh, us crafters are actually gonna have some mog, look. Sooty artisans, talent set. Black, purple, green, blue, red. Hmm, interesting. Cool. We'll, ex we'll explore that a little bit more soon, TM. You're going to have to go skinning in the future? Well, that's true. Damn gathering professions. Sooty. S sooty. <laughs> Not slutty. Not, wow, well, it depends. Female blood elf, maybe? I don't know. Uh, lastly, we'll be taking a pass on all of the older currencies and enabling warband transfer on many of those where appropriate. Um, cool. Anima, we're looking at you. Um, nice. Right, this is the cool one. I, we tweeted out about this yesterday. Uh, the Warband Bank is going to be an interesting one and holds some controversial or seemingly controversial uh, design choices to it. Uh, whilst gear is one of the primary forms of character progression in World of Warcraft, we are adding a variety of improvements to items and gear to make managing and collecting them all more convenient for alt character and alt character friendliness. Um, so this is a mock-up or a screenshot, whatever you want to call it. I presume it's actually a mock-up of the Warband Bank. So uh, they are changing the bank UI. One thing, I don't know if it said it in here somewhere or whether I've just absorbed this information from somewhere else, but they are changing the bank so that it no longer needs bags and is going to work on a tab-based system. Similar to how the Guild Bank has pretty much always worked, um, but they're sort of unifying the look of the different types of banks. Warband Bank is being added. Um, the Warband Bank can be accessed at bankers throughout the game. It will provide up to five tabs with 98 available inventory slots each. A bank tab can be purchased for an increasing amount of gold. An ever increasing amount of gold. We'll talk about those in a minute. These tabs can be customized with an icon and organized like the Guild Vault. This bank is in addition to your individual character's bank vault. Any... Non-soul-bound item can go in the warband bank. This is big. This for for any uh, for anybody that's uh, during Dragonflight dipped their toe into like cross realm selling. So like hoovering up cheap shit off like often often random servers somewhere, uh, buying up cheap stuff and then taking it somewhere else and selling it presumably at a profit. Uh, any of that sort of activity is going to make much easier with this warband bank. Um, maybe we'll talk about the, the goblinery sort of stuff after we've figured out what it all is. But um, all characters in your warband war can access the bank to freely deposit and withdraw items. The bank will also behave much like the reagent bank, allowing you to craft using reagents from it without having to withdraw them first. Uh, cool like this like this a lot i suspect my warband bank will probably be in, end up full mostly of more reagents i guess um each individual character will probably still be somewhat responsible for holding on to like the very profession specific uh materials or the soul bound materials maybe even for that profession uh, but the Warband Bank will be where you keep your basic herbs and where you keep your basic ore and stuff, I suspect. Um, so then any character that needs it at any point can just dip in and craft from it, which is nice. Shared gold is bonkers. Uh, well, look at the number, for starters. Look at the number. Uh, they seem to have lifted the 10 million gold cap for the Warband Bank. 
Uh, whether they whether the per character cap changes or whether the guild limit changes, time will tell. But this, I'm for reference, this could easily just still be a mock up. This could just be somebody pasting a big number from a Photoshop. This might not necessarily actually be the case. Um, but the 17 million gold in this war bank. So, <laughs> um, in addition, the bank will allow you to, to deposit and manually withdraw gold from uh, across your characters in your war band. Um, it would be nice if it acted similar to. This is probably a something that can be tested. But you know how the guild bank, you can withdraw funds from the guild bank for repairs. It would be nice if repairs would automatically come from this, for example. Uh, maybe little things like transmog costs uh, automatically coming from uh, your warband bank. You know, it's an alternative button, an option, a tick box, something along those lines. These are little quality of life things. Um, so then maybe you can keep a ledger of just how much your transmog actually costs you to change every day. This can have a bit of an impact on the pet market. Uh, it, yeah, fundamentally makes selling pets multiple places uh, a touch easier. Um, find the servers with the high value pets that are cheaper than on other servers, buy it and sell it on other servers. Well, I mean, the pet market's been doing that forever and a day anyway. Um, it's more for the fact that, like, your 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 world drop BOEs and stuff that are being traded from one to another. Who's having access with the alpha? Do we need the epic version bought already? No, that's the. this is one thing you've got to be very careful with. That's the beta. If you have pre-purchased the epic version of The War Within, you get access to the beta. Um, that is going to be coming out in a few months. Um, the alpha is predominantly invite only. You either need to know somebody or be somebody or preferably both. <laughs> Uh, to get into the alpha or get very lucky you can go to you can go to the is this here no that's the press center you can actually go to sign up for the beta um, I can maybe even give you a link for that where's the where's the where's the, where's the beta sign up page gone where's the beta sign up page gone uh, it's around here somewhere Sign up to test the war within. Why is that given a uh, huge, great, big, random? Um, I've already done this. Why is it asking me to do uh, whatever? Um, you, oh, yeah, well, there we go. There's a big, whacking, great, big beta option, opt-in box. Make sure you've done that. Make sure you've done that. It, whilst that doesn't necessarily... It's only rumoured that it might put you in the list for the alpha as well, but you know it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile doing either way. Um, okay, uh, there is one limitation that is worth noticing. Noting with the Warband Bank, like with Battle Pets, players who play multiple characters simultaneously on multiple World of Warcraft accounts will find that only the character that is logged in to the realm first will have access to the Warband Bank. Um, for those of you that have tried selling Battle Pets across different uh, on different servers, for example. You, you may have noticed that you get that little lock symbol and you can't change out your pets or anything on, like, account number two. So uh, the Warband Bank apparently is going to work in a similar fashion. That is clearly, 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 clearly a duplication protection system. Uh, <laughs> this, this, is, this, is, uh, this is one of my questions with this as well. I really do question if this is going to work at the same operating speed as your Guild Bank. Because the guild bank is slow, so ungodly slow. Um, it would be really nice if uh, it would be really nice if it would be as snappy and reactive as your normal bank. But I suspect it might be slow and sluggish like the guild bank, unfortunately. But 
Because of that right there, I don't see this really affecting pets at all, since you can only log into one account at a time. It's not really any better than the existing pet journal system. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's just, a, you know, it's, it's just a more... It, it gives you the flexibility to easily have access to more than three, though, because your pet journal only holds three copies of each pet. Um before you have to start like adding the journal to then recage them somewhere else and that sort of stuff it could, it's just annoying uh finally it's worth mentioning that we'd like to update the ui and functionality of the character level bank to also use tabs like the warband bank whilst this won't be done for the launch of the war within we are planning for it to come soon after so maybe an 11.1 change on this one uh when this change occurs, bags will no longer be needed in the character bank. It's intended that this change won't alter the number of slots currently available in your bank. It will just shift those slots from bags to tabs. Now, now that I have so many questions, so many questions, because a tab has, what is it, 98 slots? <laughs> We have never had a bag with 98 slots in it. Um, I don't want to have different tabs and have like th two columns. Um, I would somewhat hope bags get larger too. But they're not going to get 98 slot larger though, are they? <clears throat> bags are not great, but I don't want multiple tabs. Yeah, 36 slot bags is pretty much as big as they get right now, which is like a third of this. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Unif unifying the UI is good, but I just wish they would just, you know, say, right, you know what? Forget the bag business. Forget having bags. Here's just a shitload more bank space and have seven times 96 for your personal bank, eight times 96 for your personal bank. Just... You know, <clears throat> three bags equals one tab. Maybe, maybe they go about doing it that way. Um, I, d I don't know what the conversion will be. It'll be a bit of a weird implementation, but I would, um, I would hope they just turn around and say, you know what, you're not getting a refund for any of your bags, regardless what you paid for the bags. Your bags are going to get deleted. But instead, we're just giving you four tabs of 96 slots by default with the option to buy more. I hope they just go the simple approach, right? Rather than like a weird slots converting into tabs. Ah, that, that just sounds icky. That, that sounds very icky. I hope they smooth that out a little bit more. Uh, but more bank space, can't argue with. Happy, happy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I sense, uh, oh, what, what we didn't talk about actually, and what this article doesn't actually even show is the outrageous costs for buying the tabs. Um, the tab price is actually bonkers crazy. Let me, uh, it's actually madness level expensive. So I tweeted this out yesterday. These are the costs of the tabs, right? Um, buying your first tab is only a thousand gold, but look at what it scales to. Um, of, admittedly, this is a one-time thing. It's an account-wide thing. But if you want all five of your bank tabs, it's going to set you back over three million gold, which is wild. Um, even for like big-time goblins, that is a wild amount of... Uh, expenditure hopefully these are placeholder numbers because i mean i <laughs> i've been on record saying that i'll pay pretty much anything for more storage space but even uh, that makes me sort of like take a, a deep gulp you know um 
I can't suspect that most players will go much past tab four. It will be the big big goblins that end up with tab five. <laughs> and obviously for the for, for, for the for the Twitter sphere, um, I did the conversion of the three point one million gold into actual kind of swipe for, for swipers out there. For those who, who love to swipe the old credit card, your current NA token price at two ninety three and the EU token price at 398 nearly 400k tokens again on EU by the way um it's over $200 it's not really a micro transaction at that point is it um but you know you know some people will do it some people won't uh, i suspect most people will tap out at tab 4 honestly they're making this just as a gold sink on it like for, for you know it's a good way to get two and a half million gold out the game from from a handful of players they could just offer it all for 149 euros if you buy them all with money don't give them ideas do not give them ideas <sighs> As I said yesterday, charging six twenty five each instead would be great for the token sales. Yeah, yeah, wild, right? At least it won't go away after one patch or expansion. True, true that. So the reagent bank and the warband bank, you need to decide where to put what. It won't take reagents if it's in your indiv uh, it won't take reagents if it's in your individual reagent bank. Well, no, it, uh, I items in your individual reagent bank will only be craftable with the the character that you're on. Reagents in your warband bank can be crafted by any character because all of your characters have access to this storage space. Um, so I suspect your reagent bank, your your personal character reagent bank is where you'll put any of like those soul bound materials. Not that there's like a huge amount of them particularly right now, but um, if there's a material that like a chrono weave cloth or something along those lines, uh, something that you make on your tailor and then only need it on your tailor, you just store that sort of stuff in your regular reagent bank because your other characters are unlikely to need it. But I mean, you organize it how you wish, I guess. It's another Bruto-like sink. I mean, at over 3 million gold to get all five of your tabs, yeah. I'm also, weirdly, somewhat disheartened by the fact it's only five tabs. Five tabs at 96 slots each. Let's just round it up to 500 bank tabs is a lot but it's an account wide thing right uh, if you've got 60 characters how many people have like a couple of bank characters with guild banks on them purely to store stuff right i have somewhat got out of the habit of storing stuff I use the auction house to store stuff, right? I consider the auction house my unlimited storage space. If I have stuff, I just post it on the auction house. If it sells, great. <laughs> I'll just buy it back again when I need it. Um, that's how I've sort of dealt with inventory management for a long time now. Um, but I still weirdly think that five tabs doesn't feel like a lot. But I don't know if that's just my weird goblin brain kicking in. I mean, if there were, I, I was kind of expecting it to just basically mimic the guild, which has up to eight slots. Maybe they're leaving room to. <clears throat> maybe they're leaving room to grow it in the future. Maybe possibly, but it's I, five tabs seems like an odd number to have landed on. I've got three guild banks full of each tab, BOE, blues, epics, pets, and the auction house also being used as storage. Yeah. 500 slots, that's one Zakara vault run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all of those stupid gems. Praying for a TSM banking integration. I'm sure TSM will hop on it. TSM will hop on it. Their, their bank... UI system with TSM is a godsend, actually. 
I don't use it anywhere near as much as I used to, but it's very cool. <clears throat> so if you had the Bruto, you'd also have that mobile storage. All right, Jack. All right, now. Relax. Relax with this abuse. <laughs> Extrapolate that. A sixth tab for 12.5 million. Oh, God. Gold cap. Never mind. Well, yeah. Either way, what is it? 626, 626k for four tabs or two tokens. 40 bucks to get to, it's, you know, when you, when you convert it to real life monies, 40 bucks is almost the price of the game again. <laughs> you know, almost the price of the game again to get your four tabs in your warband bank. It could do, like, dare I say, it could do crazy things to the token when it launches. <clears throat> because, dare I say it, this is the kind of thing that people will go, oh, you know what? I could do with some extra storage. Boom. Swipe. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's move on then. Warbound until equipped gear. Uh, we've got about 1,200 videos to react to as well today, so <clears throat> I probably need to go at a slightly faster pace. Uh, Warbound until equipped is a new type of gear binding that we're introducing in the War Within. Gear that is Warbound until equipped can be freely traded across your Warband, but becomes Soulbound once you equip it. So practically replacing any of your like uh, catch-up gear sort of stuff. Any of those 385 primal gear drops, any of those 415 dream surge catch up gear sort of stuff is being converted to warbound until equipped. That's still going to restrict you from being able to sell it. You can't auction house these things off, uh, but you can throw them all in your warbound, warband, uh, warband bank and your alts can pick them up as and when they need. It's easier than having to remember, right, I've got to mail the... Like, the way I deal with all of this catch-up gear stuff is I mail it all to my bank character, and whenever I make a new character, I then log on to the bank character and mail a whole bunch of it back to the right character. It's just an annoyance. Now it means you can throw it all in your war bat, or, or You can throw it all straight in here, and those alts can just take it when they need it. Um... In the past, high item level account bound gear hasn't been made, hasn't been available because it could be used and freely traded across characters. Uh, for example, it'd be too easy to transfer a high item level account bound ring between your characters if it did not bind to a character when equipped. Players would be tempted to trade between all of their alt characters depending on who they were playing. This isn't the type of gameplay we want to encourage or support. Good. Uh, with the introduction of Warbound until equipped, Woo, <laughs> Woo gear, it's far too close to Woo for my liking, um, we're excited to start providing this much higher item level gear more often in a manageable and beneficial way. I think this leads into some sneaky, sneaky heads up that we're they're probably moving away from this kind of like end of patch slap down, you know, your, your primalist gear, your, your 385. Here's a primalist leather leggings. Um, I think they're going to move away from this and they're just going to more freely as you play, give you just sort of bits of gear that you can just use on alts. Um, hopefully, possibly you can see here slime defecting stompers, Warbound until equipped. It's a shield. It, you see all its stats. You can put this in your bank and then, I don't know, your pally tank whilst leveling can pick this up and then use it. And then once they're finished with it, it's soulbound and you just vendor it. Um, we're still working out more of the design details, but the current plan is to have uwu gear. We're going to call it uwu gear, by the way. Uwu uh, gear available within raids, dungeons and the new delves feature. Whenever you earn loot, you will have a small bonus chance to gain an additional piece of uwu gear. Uh, this gear will be at least one lower tier than the loot from that source. Currently a full upgrade track lower. Uh, so hero down to champion, for example. 
uh, and it could be gear that's usable by any class. Now, that theoretically means if you're doing... Well, obviously, mythic high-end Mythic Plus dungeons don't drop any gear at all, but I guess the concept here is for, like, Mythic Zeros. We know that in Season 4 that comes out next week, they're changing the Mythic Plus structure a bit, the dungeon structure. So Mythic... Mythic Zeros, which do drop gear. Mythic Zeros, when you kill a boss, the boss has loot on it. Mythic Zeros will be the equivalent of what today's Mythic Tens are. Um, meaning that they will likely... That is likely to be... The Mythic Zeros is likely to be the place in the game, where so outside of the raid at least, where this stuff might start dropping for you. Um, another reason that if you do your Mythic Zeros at the very least on one of your characters, you might get good catch-up gear for your alts, uh, some good uwu gear, some weebu gear. <laughs> um, by simply playing, you'll occasionally collect a single tier lower than your current gear, which could then be sent to help an alt character or even use it for a new class that you've been meaning to try out. Um, you will also occasionally stumble upon warbound until equipped gear elsewhere whilst playing so keep a lookout presumably like delves in the end chests and that sort of stuff um the see if there's seemingly wherever you earn loot there's a small bonus chance to gain something else so it would be a uh, It'd be cool for them to sort of spread out the catch-up gear a little bit. This kind of like 385 Primer list, 415 Dream Surge. It's a bit boring, right? It's a bit uninspired. Um, just, you know, slowly collecting a whole set. Actually having like pieces of gear, like actually named pieces of gear. That, oh, this could be good for, you know. It's just a bit more creative, I think. Um, if they go that route, it'd be nice to see. Um, let's talk Transmog then. For all of the Mog collectors out there, this is this is clearly going to be big business. Uh, collecting your transmog appearances has long been something that requires players to plan out their gear runs on a per armor type basis, even though item appearances are shared across your account. With the introduction of warbands, we want to make collecting appearances much more warband centric. Uh, to help players continue to expand their collections and style their alternative characters how they want. In The War Within, any character can collect any item appearance regardless of if they can equip the item or not. It's big, right? It's big. Any character can collect any item appearance regardless of if they can equip the item or not. <clears throat> uh, I wonder how this is going to impact the transmog market. <clears throat> the fact that they've specified regardless of whether they can equip the item or not. I was going by the assumption. <clears throat> Hang on, I've got something stuck in my throat. <clears> throat> um... I was going by the assumption that this would predominantly apply to like the soulbound gear that drops for you, but not BOEs. Um, so, for example, when you go back and you run a raid, <clears throat> when you go back and run a raid, all of the bind on pickup stuff that drops, because of course, legacy loot gives you anything off the loot table. When the legacy loot table gives you five pieces of gear, some of it's cloth, some of it's mail, some of it's whatever, but they're all soul bound. All you do is you just go vendor them all. But as it stands now, if you were playing a paladin, you would only get the appearances from the plate stuff, even if you picked up mail, armor, and cloth all at the same time. The fact that you vendor all of it is irrespective. Um, I was going by the assumption that you would just collect the appearances from all the soulbound stuff. Regardless of if they can equip the item or not, though. 
I guess this isn't going to apply to BOEs. I guess that I guess I am. Let's let's continue reading. Let's see if we can get some clarification on this. Class specific appearances are an exception, and still will only be uh, still will be collectible only by that specific class. Most class specific items can only be collected by those classes through a set piece token, and others are often only acquirable by that specific class anyway. Overall, it's intended that this restriction has little influence on your ability to collect the majority of transmogs that you want for your warband. It's important to note that these changes only affect your ability to collect appearances. Existing rules on which characters can use any given appearance are not changing. E.g. a priest getting a plate helm drop will unlock the appearance for your plate-wearing characters even though they cannot use even though they cannot use the plate appearance themselves. With this change we also wanted to allow you to view appearances on any character or any class or race within the appearance UI. So you can actually go through and say I want to see rogue appearances, I want to see demon hunter appearances and so on. BOEs will be collected if and when you sell them. Well, I think B I, I think BOEs, you will still need to equip the item to gain the appearance from it. <clears throat> they kind of have to do it that way. Otherwise, you would have this weird scenario. And this is why this is they, they implemented this a while ago. And then they quickly took it away because it was broken. But they... There'd be a problem, right, where somebody would buy a BOE off the auction house. If you don't need to equip the item to get the appearance off a BOE, you could buy the item off the auction house, gain the appearance from it, and then resell it again on the auction house. Um, which is weird, right? BOEs, I, th I think they're going to have to do some differentiation between bind on pickup and bind on equip here. Um I think this mostly applies to all bind on pickup stuff. So if you go kill a raid boss from like three expansions ago, any of the five, seven BOE, uh, uh, item, like bind on pickup pieces of gear it drops, you'll gain all of the appearances for those for any of your characters. Unless they mean to a vendor like they do with grey stuff. Maybe if you vendor the BOEs, May, that, that's what they implemented, right? That if you just straight vendor the BOEs, you get the appearances from them. But it was broken because you could then buy them back and you would still keep the appearance. So they switched that off. So they, they, they've clearly been working on this for a while. Hopefully for the war within, they've just kind of like finished it and it just works. Um, we're also making it easier to collect appearances from unbound items. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. You will no longer need to equip the item to add it to your collection. Any time you destroy an item via disenchanting, deleting, selling, etc., you will automatically collect the appearance. There is also a new flow to directly collect the appearance from bind on equip gear that you cannot equip by converting it to warbound until equipped instead. Whoa, whoa, hold on. There's also a new flow to directly collect the appearance from bind on equip gear that you cannot equip by converting it to warbound until equipped instead. Okay, so what it's practically saying here is any BOEs, you can convert said BOE into a warbound BOE, basically removing the ability for you to resell it, but you get the appearance... And you can still use that item on another character at some point. Okay. I assume if you put BOEs into your Warband bank, it then becomes Warbound. That could be the concept there. Existing gear in your character level bank or your bag inventory will automatically be added to your transmog collection when you first log into that character. To account for these changes, we're making a slight adjustment to how rolling for gear in raids with group loot works. 
any gear that drops with a transmog appearance you haven't collected yet will have the transmog option to roll for it rather than the greed option. Transmog has a higher priority. <laughs> yeah, but everybody just clicks need, right? <laughs> Nobody ever clicks this button. People just click need. Why? Why? <laughs> it's LFR. <laughs> everybody clicks this button. Um, when rolling on transmog, any gear that drops that can be equipped by your current character will get a higher rolling priority than those that roll with characters who cannot equip the item. E.g. a priest will always beat a warrior when both rolling transmog. Yeah, but nobody presses transmog. <laughs> nobody nobody who is actually after the... People are always go to click need. Um, obviously, there's a difference there that's, you know, in the war within, you might be able to press the transmog button because you can't press need, I guess. It will still prioritize needers over greeders. It will be needers over moggers over greeders. Um, do you want the transmog or do you need the transmog? Yeah, I need it. Yeah, yeah. Give, me a, give me a dice roll on it, please. Okay. Okay. I still have questions here. This conversion of BOEs into Warbound until equipped, I wonder how that conversion is going to happen. If it's by proxy of putting it in the Warbound bank... Anything you put in the Warbound bank automatically becomes Warbound until equipped instead. That then insta-nukes the ability to use the Warbound bank for Cross-Realm Arbitrage, meaning Cross-Realm Arbitrage will still have to function the way it does now, which is direct face-to-face -face trade between characters. Which... I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um, okay, there's still some questions about Mog. It's in, in for the purpose of completing your collection, though. It's cool. It means you don't have to worry too much. You you can do, you can go do you can use your goddamn speed druid. You can use your speed druid to plow through all of those dungeons and raids and collect all of the Mog appearances for all classes. TLDR easy right that that's easy mode transmog collecting in regards to how it integrates with other things you might want to be doing um you know eg selling your spare appearances um how's that going to work in regards to like the concept that many transmog farmers have of learn the first sell the second sort of thing um if once you've got... I, I don't know. Whatever. I guess we'll find out. Right click or it'll be some ability or something, I assume. Yeah, maybe. Put it in a put it in a machine. Put up to nine items in a machine and they come out warbound. Maybe. They stamp a warbound stamp on them. Something like that. I don't know. They could be creative with it. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're nearly through this one article. Two hours into the stream, I've done one article. Oh, God. It's going to be a long day. Uh, everyone all together, updated character select screen. We've updated the character select screen so you can see your entire warband in one character list. You will no longer need to swap between realms to see characters on those other realms. One, one exception to this is if you have multiple World of Warcraft subscriptions within one Battle.net account. In this case, you will only see the characters on the account that you're logged into. So there will be a 60 character limit on this because that's at least currently the single account limit of 60 characters. Um, in this case, you'll only see the characters on the account you're logged into, although even though all your characters across subscriptions are included as part of your warband. We also thought it would be fun to see some of the characters in your warband hanging out together. So you can sort of favorite up to four and they will all, they'll all be chilling in one zone. Made 33 million trading between expansions, mainly Season of Discovery to retail. Anything from the War Within that encourages gold sinks. Um, how does 3.126 million gold of bank tabs sound to you? Um, that's quite the gold sink. That's quite the gold sink. Uh, 
for the launch of the War Within, you'll be a, you'll only be able to assign four characters to this one scene. We are working on building more of these scenes for you to collect in the future. We're excited about earning more of these scenes as we play through the expansion and hope you will be too. I want I want the Volpira camp button. I want to be able to go somewhere in the world. Eh, selfie camera. Use the goddamn selfie camera, Blizzard. Here we go. Here's some feedback for you nice and early. Use the selfie camera. Take a selfie. That scene, that scene then becomes your, that scene then becomes your, your login. Boom. Selfie camera for the win. There we go, Blizzard. I've, uh, you can have that one for free. Uh, as a final point on the updates to the character screen, to make it easier for you to decide which character to play at any given moment, we've also added a little bit more information about each character during character selection. Oh, look! Arcane Mage, the item level, where they currently are, the professions that they have, their Mythic Plus rating, their Twos rating, and the amount of gold that they have. Oh, that's quite clever. Uh, is that going to be just like a... That's going to probably presumably be like a tooltip that pops up. I wonder... <laughs> this is like uh, Wealth Audit. This is like Wealth Audit add-on. Although it's only going to work for your characters on this screen, not for everybody everywhere. Those characters could be animated to do something there too. Somebody cooking meat on the fire, etc. Presumably, yeah. Still sad to see that they didn't go with account-wide gold. Well, they seem to have decided to not do... Whilst they are making the process easier for you to do account-wide stuff with currencies, they seem to have made the decision to not make currencies truly account-wide as a whole, not even gold, right? You, you, still have, you still collect them on a single character. They're just making it easier for you to send them wherever you need. I'm presuming there was some... Because this seems overly complicated. But this seems like a complicated solution fixing fixing a more complicated problem somewhere else that we probably don't know about. I, th I think probably there's more technical issues behind the scenes to why currencies being account-wide is, is, is more difficult to achieve. And so they've gone this route of just making it... E like, the first steps... Baby steps, right? Make it we'll, we'll make it easier for you to transfer currencies where they need to be um, with maybe the eventual goal of fixing the bigger problem of making currencies truly account-wide. Um, the fact you can throw big numbers of gold into your warband war bank is quite cool, though. Might, uh, might utilize that to stash most of my gold in. Do we have clarity on the account wide bank? Uh, a reasonable amount. A reasonable amount. Uh, can you have multiple war bands on a single account? No. No. In your brain, replace the word account with war band. That's what it is. Anything where you would usually use the word account is now war band. Um... It's basically a change of language. Um, so anything, will, you know, one account is your warband. Uh, one battle.net account is your warband, right? Um, the, the, the words are pretty interchangeable now. Can you put transmog, etc. in it, bind on equip stuff? Uh, the Warband Bank, just as a quick overview again, it does state that you can put any non-soulbound item into the Warband Bank. Uh, what we don't know is what happens to those items when they go in the bank. Um, I'm starting to suspect that if you put BOEs in here, they become Warbound BOEs. Um, but that requires some access to the alpha to do a little bit of testing. But any non soul bound item can go in there. All characters can access them. 
Um, all, all characters can use reagents that are in here for the purpose of crafting. There's up to five tabs, um, and they get very expensive to buy. <laughs> That's the TLDR on the bank, at least. Right, so is that, the, is that mostly what we have here? Right, yeah, the warband system is an evergreen feature that we plan to continue expanding into the future. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback as we continue development on the War Within. Um, happy alting, and we'll see you in Azeroth. So that was the preview of the warbands. It took me a lot longer to go through that than I expected, but I hope that was useful for some of you. Um, th there's a possibility that I might TLDR that for a 8 to 10 minute video for YouTube, just so that there's something solidified out there where I can point people to when the repeat questions clearly pop up. Um, but my overview of that so far is it sounds like it's going to add so much more flexibility. Um, it can only be a good thing, right? There's a water storm in the Anaran Plains. Uh, there is, and there's an air storm in the Azure Span. Do I need water in the Anaran Plains? Uh, I need snow storm in the Anaran Plains. Is that the same, right? Snow is water, right? Or, or, or snow is one form of water. <laughs> okay, let's go and have a little bit of a look. Uh, what we call is that? This is, uh, I don't know, good question. <laughs> good question. Uh, Tamar's something or other. Tamar's primal module. You want links? You have links. Where's links? Have links. Uh, right. Let's go do a water storm in Anaran Plains, apparently. That's a quick, quick switch Rooney. Quick switch Rooney. More importantly, I'm absolutely desperate to go for a P, so we will fly over there casually. Uh, who's stolen the flight master? Uh, we'll go that far. Right, I'll be back in two minutes, boys and girls. Entertain yourselves for a couple. Uh, we're going to smash out 120 mobs in this snowstorm, and then we'll get back to being a filthy React Andy. There's, I've got a list of videos I want to go through. Um, and I will try my best to not be a pause Andy at the same time. Um, back in two minutes, boys and girls. I'll use this opportunity to get some ads played so that they're out of the way. Um, go grab yourself a drink, keep yourself occupied for two.
Alrighty then. Okie dokie 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 okie dokies. Let's uh let's get this let us get this. Ooh, should I be doing this on an ult? Should I be doing this on an ult for some cheeky easy levels? Uh no. Oh no, because I need to kill these bosses for elemental elemental lariat recipe chances. That's probably the play here, isn't it? That's probably the play. Let's uh Let's pew pew some stuff, shall we? Am I on a dead realm? <laughs> Why is like literally everything up on my realm? How have I managed to get myself on a dead realm? Why are alts not good for the lariat chances? Uh, Cause I'm still not 100% convinced that you can get the recipe if you're not a jewel crafter. Um, but I'm not sure. I would rather be doing it on a Jewel Crafter just, 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 just because. Don't worry, when you get the mob to 50% health, you'll get phased away anyway. It's really annoying when that happens. You're not wrong. Such a stupid bug. I don't know why it does it, but... Well, we've surpassed 50%. We're fine. We're good. These aren't even the right rares, to be honest. I shouldn't probably be killing this. I might try and actually find a group to join. It'll be quicker and easier. God, I want to buy the collector's edition. Would go great with the raggy statue. They're taking the piss on the delivery prices on those. I don't know how many of you have noticed that they're charging up to 200 bucks just for flipping delivery of the thing. Uh, which is absurd. I mean, I could physically get in a taxi and go and pick it up for less than that. <laughs> it's like mental. They they clearly need to get themselves a uh, a new an, <laughs> a new agreement with FedEx or something. Jesus, hang on, there's a bunch of people down here killing things anyway. Blizz loves our money. I mean, everybody loves money. I don't think there's a I don't think it's uh, fair to say that they're any different to anybody else in that regard. Am I getting credit for these? Yeah, 91. Here we go. We are we are moving up in the world. The other statues are on sale as well. Looked at the Alex Straza statue. It clearly has smaller assets than the, lo than the loading screen. <laughs> I, I see where we're going. I've um I've never been like a big merch guy. It says him sat here in a side men hoodie, but like. For, for World of Warcraft, I don't think I own any single piece of Warcraft merch, if I'm honest. <laughs> There's part of me that thinks I've dedicated way way too, mu too much of my life to this game already to give them more money to wear a t-shirt. But then again, for any of you that have seen, like, I'm not one of... I, I, I'm... I'm such a simple folk. I don't care for like fancy. I don't have one of those traditionally typical streamer decorated rooms. Um, when when you see when you see my when you see my actual room, you know I I, I don't care. Blank walls. I don't really. I'm bothered. 
I don't need fancy neon lights and flashy things all over the place. Oh, I like my TV, mind. Jack complains it's off all the time, so hence why you don't see it. <laughs> I should just put subscribe to Mantheus or Twitch Prime or something on it. Uh, somebody who heard it from their cousin's wife's brother said that the recipe can be... Yeah, exactly. It's one of those. Like, until I see it firsthand, given the chance to do it on my jewel crafter, I will kill the res on my jewel crafter. Just, just as that's, uh, the safest way to guarantee that, well, if it can drop, it will drop sort of thing. Hundred and five... I should probably find a better group. Um, although, am I in? Am I suffering the grass is always greener situation here? We are killing things, and progress is being made. So maybe I won't be too fussy. Why have I got something marked? Let's not get rid of that. Um, right, here's a we we got we got ten minutes here, boys and girls. While I quickly finish this off, there's probably about five hundred videos on the War Within that all went live at about the same time yesterday from numerous different creators and outlets and all sorts of stuff. I cherry picked a few. But for anybody out there that's maybe uh, looked at a few of them already, if there's any strong suggestions on which ones were like very informative or maybe more goblinry profession sort of focused or related, um, I'm open to suggestions on which ones we do. The first one I want to do is the official World of Warcraft one because it's I haven't even watched that myself yet. Um, Please don't let Bellula be one of them. Oh, poor Bell. <laughs> if you like lore, watch the novel one. Uh, fantastic content creator, but I couldn't care less about the lore. Personally. The the what what's they the official campsite business was one of the ones I wanted to watch. Um, oh whoa 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 the Wowcast one that's the one I actually want to watch first. In fact, that's half an hour long. Based on based on how many times I press the pause button, that half an hour video could be four hours by the time I've uh, by the time I've finished it. So we'll start with that and we'll see how far we get. The reality is, is we don't need to uh, we don't need to blow our load too early. We got plenty of time. It's not like the game launches tomorrow. We haven't even got the alpha yet, so The Wowcast is pretty much the same info as the Blizz news post. Did the Wowcast touch on anything outside of Warbands, though? I'm assuming it probably did, right? Do we think that Manthus will get an alpha invite? Have you actually made a poll? You actually have made a poll. Lord have mercy. I mean, I, 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 will, I will vote the way that I hope. I will huff that hopium. Oh, hang on, that probably wasn't very smart, was it? Um, um, yeah, that, di that didn't turn out to be the best decision, did it?
Right, pet do pet things. Keep me alive. Ah, oh, the troops turned up. Good. Maybe watch it on a faster speed. Can we can we manage can we manage two x speeds? People sound funny when you watch them at two x speed, though. This is the Wowcast covered roughly. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's a few articles that have done like crib notes for it. Maybe that might be a better way to approach that. I, I'm I'm weird though. I'm weird in terms of the fact that I prefer to hear things from the horse's mouth. I'm not calling Ian a horse. Um, sometimes stuff gets uh, these these highlight articles from Wowhead and the likes. You often lose stuff in translation. It's only half an hour long. I'll do my best to absolutely categorically not pause it 500 times. There, there's a promise. Heard something about fake work orders for crafters. Yeah, NPC orders is the one thing that they seem to be happy to tell us about happening. 499 pauses only. Yeah. We'll see. Sixty nine percent voted yes. Well that means there's officially a four hundred and twenty percent chance I get it then, right? Isn't that how that works? How many we got? One four E seven. One forty eight. Fifty or so to go. Oh, pet's dead. Oops, what a terrible hunter. Let my pet die. Uh, where's the crew of people killing things? Ah, bear druid. Stay near the bear. There's a there's a good plan of action. Stay near the bear. Where did that bear go? All right, set focus on the bear. <laughs> Misdirect onto the bear. Okay, my misdirect macro seems to not work. Okay. Can you not misdirect onto people outside of your party? Is that not a thing? Um, I've lost my bear friend. Where did he go? Save me. Save me, bear friend. We'll just be a super tagger. We'll tag everything. Tag everything, run away. What could possibly go wrong?
The work order system frustrated people, so the War Within will have NPC crafting orders so that there's always something for you to grab. Player crafting orders will be more lucrative. Oh, that last line intrigues me. How are they going to make actual player ones more lucrative? Considering the level of lucidity, that's not a word, is it? If it is, I've just made it up. It sounds cool. I'll use it. Uh, the level of lucidity is not exactly fantastic to begin with. Outside of very rare situations. They're going to 100x the minimum commission up to one gold. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Creates a interesting opportunity for like... Uh, Material sinks. If, um, if, if, uh, if you can, because obviously NPC work orders, their primary usage is clearly for getting the skill points from crafting the thing, right? Your first time craft bonuses, that sort of stuff. That's kind of like the main target market for them in the first place. That's why can, people were so so uh, frustrated that they couldn't get orders complete because they felt like they needed orders to progress with their profession. Does that mean once, does that mean you're going to continuously be able to do NPC work orders? Is that going to be something that acts as a bit of a material sink? Players will buy the materials needed to fulfill said orders if they remain profitable to do. Could be a smart way of doing things. <laughs> NPC bait orders incoming. <laughs> no material bait orders. Hey, and now in plain storm chasing done. One to go. Firestorms in Thalandrasis. Okay, easy game, easy game. Get me out of it. No, don't get me out of it. Where's the rare? Where's the rare? Um, hello, rare? Up this way? Hello? <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, dead. Wonderful. Okay, well, maybe next time. I feel like we're getting some crappy profession systems, so everybody re-roll. So you can use cooldowns. Mats and enchanting will be the first thing to sell. Boring. I mean, it's a bit early for that level of negativity, but sure. Been watching you since Plunderstorm, loving the streams. Ah, glad you enjoy. Thank you, thank you. Welcome in. Another three years with trade chat spam. I mean, that that honestly, like, if they even do something, I don't know what that something could be, but it doesn't need to even be anything particularly special, but just something to make make it so that trade chat is not the go-to place to, to, to tout your skills, right? Um, trade chat seems so unfit for purpose in regards to... I, I, I know it's called trade chat. It's the chat location where you should commence trading. But it, it seems like a 2006 solution to a 2024 problem. And it always has done. Um, right. Right. We have done the important stuff for now, at least. Let's camp ourselves up here. Have I missed Dragonbane Keep again? I think I have, haven't I? 
Uh, 31 minutes left. Yes, I've missed it again. Right, let's uh, let's switch a Rooney over to that one. Let's also very quickly make sure I don't do something massively stupid. There we go. They need a merchant board that you can fill out as a crafter, your rates that you charge, etc. Then the player... Then it shows to the player the skill of your profession, what you can craft, and they can place orders directly. Yeah. There was a discussion that went on in the Discord a couple of days ago. The fact that nearly everybody else that has ever implemented this kind of system into a video game has had like a buy and sell order system. You know, they, they it comes as a pair. Blizzard implemented just the buy order system without any sell order system. So it's like half the system yet yeah, it's kind of like you you know you, you it that's why it's all it's like this it's like everything's imbalanced right everything's weighted so heavily towards the person buying it and it doesn't make any sense that it works that way and especially considering the art of trade is thousands of years old it's not like something that's brand new that people have just come up with you know people have been bartering literally forever you give me a pail of milk and I will give you some sheep wool, you know. It's a it's the art of negotiation. It's the art of the deal. Um, you can't give one party all of the power and the other party nothing at all. Otherwise, at that point, it's no longer a deal. It's no longer a trade. It's no longer a negotiation. It's borderline blackmail. Like, you give me this and I will pay you that. No questions asked. That That's not a deal. That's not a trade. That's you telling me what you want and giving me no chance to have any comeback. Anyway, you almost got me into Ranthius mode. We're not doing any of that business today. Don't be silly. This is this is, this is is big, exciting fun day. Let's, um, let's take a little bit of a look of everything you need to know about the war within, apparently. Everything. Absolutely everything. They said it themselves. Let's uh, let's kill the tunes. Don't need those in the background. Um, absolutely everything. Let's also make sure that we have the... Do we have... Uh, you guys don't have audio. Why do you guys not have audio? Uh, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Do you guys now have audio? Yes, you do. Beautiful. Also seems hey remarkably everyone, loud. Welcome to WoWcast. Today we're going to talk about the war within, which. Uh, right, full screen mode. Let's go. Let's go. Full full engagement metrics. FYI, there is no historical or archaeological evidence for bartering in pre-money societies. I mean, who wants to live in a pre-money society? Crazy people, right? Let's go. Alpha starts soon. I have two special guests with me today. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Ian, Game Director on WoW. I'm Tina, Associate Art Director on WoW. Volume's good, so boys and girls. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we talk about Alpha, what can you summarize about The War Within, Ian? Well, so The War Within, I mean, of course, it is the 10th expansion to well-known video game World of Warcraft. But even, I think, more special to us, it's the beginning of the World Soul Saga. It's the beginning of probably the most the ambitious begins. story we've ever tried to tell in WoW. Uh, so as you know, all expansions do, it kicks off with a journey to a new place. But really, this is going to be beginning to set the stage and establish the stakes for a conflict that threatens not just you know ourselves and, and our families and those we hold dear, but the very world that we call home, the very world beneath our feet that's been home to all of our adventures. And if we don't win this one, nothing else matters. So this character has been everywhere for the War Within. <laughs> Once Zalatath. again, we she's must purple, save she's the amazing. world. She's amazing. Can you tell us more about her? Yeah, Zalatath is uh, you know one of our key villains of the World Soul Heart Saga. Of 
the expansion is, I mean, part of it is this journey, uh, delving deeper, find Zalatath and her allies. And uh, the inspiration uh, for her design from an art side was really based on the uh, priest artifact weapon that she had been trapped in for so long. So if you look at her armor, like all the motifs of you know, her belt, her shoulders, really take inspiration from that uh, design. Uh, even the runes on her cheeks, uh, those are a homage to Nizoth, who freed her from the dagger. Uh, Naifu. Yeah, so if later on in War Within you find yourself, you know, wiping to a raid somewhere, just blame the Shadow Priests for not just putting the knife down, yeah, why walk away from that? the talking dagger, and oh, we wouldn't be here. Oh my and yet, gosh. Um, are there any other familiar faces always that blame we can the recognize? Priests. Uh, yeah, some of the key uh, heroes of our story are uh, Illyria and Anduin. So these two, they've, I mean, they're, they're running a bit, right, from some of the wounds of their past, but in the end, they're going to find hope and redemption. So, you know, Illyria, we've seen her uh, new design that really reflects the duality of her character. And Anduin, uh, we saw him in our cinematic, and he just looks, you know, a little more haggard. He's, he's been through a lot lately. He grows beard. The summon, <laughs> yes. a few people have said this, right? A few people have said that this character model kind of just looks off for some reason. And I don't think anybody can really pinpoint why, but he just kind of looks off. There's <laughs> something about it's not right. I can't quite figure out. It's like, I, I don't know what it is. Omar Haggard, he's, he's been through a lot lately. He grows beard. <laughs> he's yes, working so. on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the name The War Within is one that has a couple of layers to it. Right? Obviously, we're literally delving beneath the surface. Looks like an of action man doll. We're going to be battling within our world. But this Smooth is also package. a story that involves a lot of <laughs> inner turmoil and inner conflict. And Anduin is probably the most torn of any of our, our cast of heroes, given what he went through in the Shadowlands. And his journey into the darkness as he seeks to rediscover his own light is a big part of the narrative arc. And with The War Within, there's new zones. Can we talk about what our new zones are going to be? The continent as a whole that begins on the surface and extends beneath the Earth, right, isn't, we're calling Kazalgar. This is an ancient home to the Earthen. It's actually just off the west coast of Pandaria, about between Pandaria and Kalimdor. How and did we ever miss it? A couple miss hundred it? nautical miles away from a certain sword that's sticking oh. out of the southern end of Kalimdor. But yes, home to four How zones did we ever um, miss with it? amazing varied settings. Yeah, uh, so our first zone, uh, the Isle of Dorne. This is basically, you'll find an isolated group of Earthen there. And so they have their awesome city, Dornogal, which we're very excited to, for players to Did he to just out. address the, the sword? The what sword? Uh, the second zone is the Ringing Deeps. So, you know, the evocative of There's like, a ringing in my deeps. industry. And so this is the heart of Earthen industry. But it's not all just, you know, lava and fire. It's uh, mixed with these beautiful caverns, cenotes with uh, light and water coming in creating these uh, you know, lush spaces for the players to enjoy. And then uh, we go to Howlafall. Howlafall is where we really uh, wanted to break expectations. All right, like this one, uh, this is Arathi, airships. This is the crystal sun right, zone. Underground airships, right? It's the first thing you'd naturally <laughs> think of when you're going under the surface. How are they going to get around? Well, airships, of course. Of course. <laughs> And then our final zone is Ashkahet. So this is the heart of the Nerubian Empire. This is where we'll finally be able to see the Nerubians in all of their strength and glory, like with the height of their civilization. I think uh, we'll get into the details of Alpha later, but everyone's journey is going to start in the Isle of Dorne. But I really can't wait until we get to Hallowfall in our testing. You know, I think the, you know, Tina mentioned that this crystal, it is such a striking visual element that dominates the zone. Imagine in this place deep within the earth. I think one thing we do without being light, a pause, Andy, the way, I know I know, said we'll pause it 500 times. I do think one thing we already know about the Alpha is that they're doing it in quite deliberate stages. I think even the guys that had some sneaky play over the last few days of the Alpha were only able to play like one of the zone. I think they're going to give us like a zone to explore and delve <laughs> through uh, in like in turn. This means that there's theoretically going to be at least sort of four to five weeks of alpha, I suspect, as they give you something different each and every week. Um, that kind of that system kind of worked for them quite well in Dragonflight of sort of staggering and sort of focusing everybody to go and test and play and break sort of one aspect of the game illuminates the surroundings that actually plays with the environment and some of the spawns and how the world around it reacts to it. And I think when we set out to create this underground space, we knew that one of the risks was that it could feel oppressive, that people didn't want to feel the sense of claustrophobia of you're always in caves. Mm -hmm. 
Hallowfall really from the outset was built to be a place where Honestly, unless you fly all the way up to check out the ceiling above you, it doesn't feel underground. It feels like you could be outdoors oh, that's a in cool some mount. vast, welcoming area. It's, it's the student mount. <laughs> when we arrive to the Isle of Dorne, what's the first thing we'll see? Well, so you're going to see something a, a bit wild different in Alpha appears. from when the expansion goes live. There is an expansion intro experience that is not currently being tested. It's something that has some you know, cool narrative elements that we want players to all experience together later in the year when War Within launches. But players will spawn in, in the Alpha, on the Isle of Dorne, surrounded by some debris that will look pretty familiar and pretty distinctive, and really is the scars of an initial battle that seems like it didn't end so well. Um, Oops. And the beginning of our journey, as, as, many, as with many expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an investigation of, of arriving in a strange land, having this threat that we face, these visions, these whispers that heroes around Azeroth have been hearing in, in recent months. Keyword being seems. But trying to understand the nature of the threat sneaky, we face, sneaky. how we're going to stop it, and our journey begins on the doorstep of these ancient earthen people who are going to begin, you know, work, work. helping us figure out where to go next. They're going to become our next allied race too, right? Once we earn their trust, that's for <laughs> sure. Is there any other NPCs that we're going to be familiar with? Yeah, they're going to be uh, some characters that we haven't seen in World of Warcraft in a while, but will be, you know. Oh, I've just noticed they've got the statue in the background here. It looks pretty cool, actually. It does look very cool. Part of this story, uh, that's because of their, you know, dwarven heritage and, you know, Magni, he hears the radiant song. He brings some of his family members along. Uh, Moira, who is leader of the Dark Iron that's Dwarves cool and heir to Ironforge. Uh, she'll be here with her son, Dagran, who is now a young adult. Uh, the Dagran, hell? the last time we saw him in game, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. But now, <laughs> uh, you know, the Dark Iron heritage is starting to show more in his appearance, along with his personality. So he has a bunch of these scrolls and books, like really showing Crazy that he has type. a very scholarly nature. I think one of the one of the fun aspects of just world building and narrative in WoW is we have this vast array of characters and champions and heroes and, and you know backup characters, and whenever we figure out where we're going, what the next natural location is, what the story <laughs> elements are, it? the first question we ask is, I'm going great. I don't think I'm doing that great. Who does it make sense to have answer this call, want to step forward, just as when we were dealing with. You know, the Green Dragonflight or the Emerald Dream or, or the like. Okay, this is time for Malfurion and Tyrande to step forward. Now that we're going to this ancestral homeland of the Earthen with this ancient connection to the Dwarven legacy of Azeroth, this is a time for our dwarves to take center stage. All right, so let's talk about the eight new dungeons in the War Within. What are your guys' favorites or the notable ones you want to talk about? Well, so one, let's see, one that's fun to talk about is actually probably the first dungeon the players are going to see in their journeys, and it's going to be tested early on in the alpha. This is the Rookery Dungeon in the, the Isle rookery. of The Rookery. The Rookery is the place where the Storm Griffins were raised and trained by the ancient Earthen over, over the centuries. Um, oh, the cool. The Griffins go hand in hand, and the Earthen have a legacy of storm riders that you know we got to see a little sneak peek of if you, you know, got the war within heroic edition you might have been flying around on been that ri guy. riding on There's this dude for a while came from in the isle of dorn and so and this dungeon of course is not all peaceful uh, it's been overrun by a group of corrupted earth and known as the scarden and we're going to be on just beginning to understand where they came from and what their nature is as we fight through it but one cool thing about this dungeon is that it's actually part of the main campaign as you play through Isle of Dorne. Now, I know some people mm -hmm. are instantly saying, wait a minute, I don't like doing dungeons. I just like solo questing. That's terrible. Well, follow dungeons. in 10.2.5, towards the end of Dragonflight, we introduced this feature called Clever. Follow Dungeons. Clever. And we're really happy to bring that to the level up dungeons in War Within right from the outset so that you can go in solo with NPC allies as you play through the dungeon, if that's what you prefer. Or, of course, you can just queue up with regular with, with friends or random group mates through the group finder. But what this lets us do is, where appropriate, we can really have the story flow directly through dungeons in a way that we couldn't in the past, in ways that at times was frankly awkward, because sometimes mm -hmm. major villains die in dungeons. Dungeons are places of great importance in a zone, 
but we couldn't really tie them directly into the questing because we didn't want to create an obstacle for players who really just prefer to keep playing solo. Tina, is there anything that you like? One of my favorites is in Hallowfall. So it's called the Priory of the Sacred Flame, and it's this Erethor monastery. So uh, one of the coolest parts is the final boss room. There's this giant uh, window that frames the crystal that is embedded in the ceiling of Hallowfall. And so I love, you know, the beauty of the room, as well as just how it ties in with the narrative of the story as a whole. And another really cool one, it's the City of Threads. How many dungeons so do they say? Eight dungeons. Is underneath the Nerubian city proper. And so it's really uh, interesting to see the ancient civilization Eight. that okay. the newer civilization was built on top of. And just to think about the layers of Nerubian history that, you know, is in this land. Is it that the na the ancient civilization back in like Lich King? Even far before oh, that even. even. Before that? Yeah, the Nerubians, I think, you know, we might think of them as monstrous or arachnid. They're one of the great powers, one of the great advanced civilizations of Azeroth, right up there with wow. the, you know, elves and trolls and the others that helped shape the course of, of the world's history. Then why are they not a playable race? We've only really seen hints of them, going back to, to Wrath, if you ran the Azjol Nerub or Ankehet dungeons, you could see, you know, their buildings off in the, in the background, but you know, they were a civilization <laughs> and the rivals the High of Elves kids. and the Nightborn on the surface. That's insane. They were able Absolute to go to some of the Lich King's armies and win until the old gods and you know, their forces on another flank eventually led to the Nerubians being overwhelmed. But really being able to explore what they're all about is one of the things we're most excited about when it comes to War Within. Please no one playable One of the things spiders. we're excited to uh, bring is an arachnophobia filter, if you will. For all of you out there who uh, could never, you know, go to that spider section in Nax, uh, you'll be able to turn on our arachnophobia filter and all uh, spider <laughs> beasts will turn into crabs. Crab so mode. About that. <laughs> yeah, it actually looks, Crab wave. It, Let's it, go. it works way better than you might think just here Okay. that sentence. I can't wait for players to you know, be able to jump in, turn it on, and you know, hopefully feel more comfortable in parts of our world. You know, this is something that when we announced the well, if you have crapophobia centric themes of War Within at BlizzCon, then you we are trepidation double from portions of our community who love WoW, but were worried they weren't going to be able to experience it. Honestly, prior to that, it's something we heard concerns about from within. Isn't our own uh, I was playing when we were playing Satisfactory. Don't they turn all the spiders into cats or something? I, I wonder why their choice was to turn them into crabs, something that whilst is not going to trigger arachnophobes so much, crabs are still um, a bit weird, right? It's still a like odd looking mollusk thing that is a bit kind of icky. There are, you know, people who genuinely felt turn them into like sheep or something of the game that we were building together and so I don't think there's anybody that's scared of a sheep. Turn them into pandas? Still, you know, preserve the fidelity of the game but really make it more approachable, more accessible to everyone. So speaking of the Nerubians, once we reach level 80, we're gonna to go to the new raid, Nerubo Palace. Wait, hang on, still my favorite is Hippopotamonstrous. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Is that actually a thing? We're, we're going to fully utilize, sorry, pause Andy mode here. Pause Andy mode here. Hippopotamonstrous Esquipheliophobia. <laughs> <laughs> you what the hell? Can we can we re-roll that one? Hippopotamonstrous esquipheliophobia. <laughs> sure, I'm not even going to attempt. I'm not even going to attempt that one. What does it mean? Hippopotamonstrous esquipheliophobia. It's got to be to be scared of hippos, right? Surely, it's got to be. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, where did we go? Here we go. Uh, is there anything you want to speak about that? Yeah, this raid is epic in so many ways. Uh, one of the uh, coolest parts is there's this beautiful uh, show piece. Oh, it's the fear uh, of long is words, is it really? Queen's Palace. Oh, Lord. It represents the Nerubian race, and it just shows how highly Queen Ansrek thinks of her people and herself. This raid will get, one of the sections of the raid will get to check out her innermost sanctum. This is where, you know, only uh, VIPs for the Nerubians get to go and you really get to explore the dark elegance of her palace. I think, again, as we were just saying, like the Nerubians, we need to remember they are an advanced race, very, you know, just this epic civilization. I think there's some parallels probably to going back to the Nightborn in Suramar and what going into that city and that palace felt like. We really want to show 
the sophistication here. So this is not a monstrous cool supervillain lair. This is, you know, a, a superpower of Azeroth that we find ourselves, you know, facing off against. But yeah, the, the Queen Anserek encounter that Tina mentioned, she's going to be the end boss of sort of the initial season, the initial raid tier. Uh, the encounter team is hard at work on this one. I can't wait to see it tested later on in beta. Um, this is, you know, the, the whole room is really purpose built to showcase some vertical elements and, you know, just it's just an incredible set piece. But we want to, as always, integrate the environment wherever possible into our encounters. So you're facing off against both, you know, a very powerful magical user, but also someone who is arachnid in nature. Mm. And how do we kind of deliver parts of the fantasy of, you know, scaling a web while locked in combat against the queen? Those are the things that we're currently exploring. Can't wait to see that up for testing. Does that mean we're gonna get tier sets again? Certainly. I think well, last time we tried taking them away, I recall <laughs> torches and pitchforks in the street. New tier means new taking tier sets. Tears or, t- and these taking days, tier you know, sets away was years ago, probably not the wise choice. Had, we had to raid in order to get the tier set. Now you can get them from a wide array of activities, whether you're a raider, Mythic Plus player, or an outdoor world player, which includes now Delves. Ah, Ta-da. Delves. Segway. Let's, get, let's start talking about Delves. Yeah, I mean, delves are one of the major new features in War Within, and I think we're really excited to Any offer delve a, a footage. more structured progression oriented. I think Towley did a full playthrough of video world gameplay of that some we of the know delves. is the favorite of so many of our players. And, you know, delves are these seamless experiences integrated into all of our zones where you can have these localized, varied adventures alongside in the first season, Brand Bronzebeard, either on your own or with friends. Um, and finally, you know, get a shot at some endgame epic rewards Cash just money, through an extension of the outdoor world ecosystem. Yeah, we'll be able to get it from the Great Wall, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super exciting. So one of our goals with building Delves was we really wanted the player to just feel like they adventured, came across a place and could just, you know, go in and see what's inside. When you walk up to the Delve, there's this, you know, dark misty door and you click on it and then it just disappears and you just walk into your own personal Delve instance. So very excited about that. I mean, players are going to see how that first experience on the Isle of Dorne early in the Alpha. Uh, the first Delve they're likely to encounter is Earthcrawl Mines. You're going to encounter your good friend Bran Bronzebeard outside an ancient earthen mine that has been overrun with Nerudians. I wonder where, do you just, are we just gonna click on Bran to upgrade you if you want him to outfit himself as a, as a healer or as a damage dealer to help support you. And you'll venture in and have your very first Delve experience. Um, you'll be able to choose whether you wanna do it on tier one or tier two difficulty. Tier one is kind of the default. This is for oh, everyone experience. Different tier difficulties two is for those for who want to opt into a bit more of a challenge because that's what they enjoy. Uh, there will be higher tiers that can be unlocked at max level as part of the end game and seasonal progression. And we really just can't wait to get player feedback from the outset, really all through alpha, on this new system, on you know how it is or isn't working Tier for you, level and whether we can you know, really meet everyone's Dells, expectations okay. from people who just want a casual romp as an extension of their outdoor what? world experience. <laughs> can, we, can we just hold it right there for a second? Can we hold it right there? P- what, what was that, Ian? Uh, what was that? Meet everyone's expectations from people who just... From people who just want a casual romp. You, you heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. Delves are suitable for people who just want a casual romp. No commitments needed. All keys in the pot. <laughs> just want a casual romp as an extension of their outdoor world experience to those who want a solo progression challenge that they can really strive to overcome. Um, feedback is going to really help shape how this evolves, but we're so excited about Delves as a central part of War Within. Yeah, I'm excited that we're going to be able to just jump in and get our, like go solo with Bran, or you can have friends, but also just get rewards in that way, especially the tier sets with the Catalyst, exactly. and then that really cool mechanical mount. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to kind of be an introduction to the, sort of the Delves end game. As you hit max level, as you hit 80, and start to get a if sense of the Delves ecosystem. If this doesn't have some integration right that, with... We're going to give you this epic, customizable mount. This absolutely, definitely, 100% must have something to do with engineering. No shot are they going to put a customizable mount like this in without an engineer making the engine or something. Surely, right? It's got to be. Sounds like Torghast 2.0 presented by the Torghast designer. Well, I like Torghast. Shoot me. 
But I like Torghast. I don't think there was anything wrong with Torghast. The issue with Torghast more than anything was they made it so that people felt as if they had to do it. Um, and there's 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 a nat- there's there's an inherent problem with forcing people to do something that it doesn't matter how good it is. If you force somebody to do it twice a week, it's going to piss a bunch of people off. So hopefully, as long as there's no long tail power integration to delves um then or at least should i say as long as delves don't wind their wind their way into like top end heroic mythic progression then i think it'll be absolutely fine kind of the successor to the customizable drakes you had in dragon isles where you'll be able to through doing delves earn a variety of different customizations and attachments that you can mix and match to really create your own personalized flying mount. So does Sounds this mechanical cool. mount have dynamic flying? This is yeah. one of the big questions we had moving on from Dragonflight. We had the question of like, well, okay, dragon riding is amazing. Mm-hmm. We're, we can't get rid of this, Mm-mm. but how is this gonna work alongside of the hundreds of mounts that we already have in players' collections? And how, from a design perspective, how do we navigate a magic. world where some mounts can fly in this awesome way and others can only do the old quote unquote static flight? Uh, fortunately, I think our art team was able to work out an amazing solution. Hey, it's a us. bee! Yeah, we were oh, very that's cool. excited to be able to lava bee. make pretty much all mounts be able to dynamically fly. So even Nimrod's head in, we figured it out, <laughs> we made it work. So I'm really excited to see Nimrod's <laughs> cool. head going like super fast. <laughs> Another feature coming in the world. I guess we gotta go really get that one then, right? As well as a lot of other people is warbands. Yeah, warbands, I mean, again, I think as I summarized it at BlizzCon, it's just account-wide everything, mm-hmm. almost everything. Uh, it, this, you know, players increasingly almost play everything. multiple characters. Disclaimers, Some of heard loud and clear that, you know, the game needs to be more alt-friendly, that players want to be able to choose where they spend their time across their different characters instead of feeling like they have to reprogress everything individually. And so, yeah, the Warband is just, it is your account in its entirety. It is your collection of champions, whether they're Horde or... Oh! Poor Zandi mode. Warband bank. Okay. Uh, There's already a a huge amount of stuff in there. These icons are indicative of the the Primal 385 catch-up gear. Now... Clearly poor, because only unlocked one tab. So, clearly the opinion of a poor doesn't count anywhere near as highly as the opinion of a rich person, because that's grim. Uh, go Lions, on, hover Rome, over something, Rome give me some tool on. tips. They're all part of the same warband, which gives access to various shared progression systems. And then you get to see oh, all that was of all your we got favorites to see. Okay. on, uh, you know, one screen together. So uh, in our new UI, we'll have warbands, and you'll be able to be like, you know, maybe that's a lariat recipe in the bank. They'll get, get rich, maybe. Is that on the character select screen? Yeah, the character select oh, screen. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's going to be totally different than what we're used to logging in. Exactly. Yes, you'll you'll know. Like this is a completely different world. It's a completely different welcome into World of Warcraft. Um, what we showed off at BlizzCon was just actually a UI mock-up but we're excited to see people react to the real thing. And really, as with everything else, you know, warbands are a foundation. They're, this is a system that we want to build the next generations of World of Warcraft on. You know, in 2004, WoW launched with everything character-based. In 2024, WoW is going to shift to everything being account-based. And we can't Only wait took to 20 hear years. feedback about what other areas we can expand upon here. And that's going to shape not just War Within, but later updates and expansions. And we're just, you know, just excited about this platform that better reflects the way our players are looking to play World of Warcraft today. You can't forget about Good PvP. Effort. Let's talk Good about it. Yeah. Uh, so we have a new battleground called the Deep Hall. This one is earthen themed. It's a bit of a mashup between uh, Silver Shard Mines and Arathi Basin. So you know, hold some points, push some carts. Uh, we're really excited to see how players uh, navigate around this one. Oh, yeah. this is this is the one that they showcased like just the top down scuffed map view at BlizzCon. We looked at that yesterday, so they clearly padded it out and made it look pretty now. So how players are interacting with it, um, there is an overhaul to our rated battleground system that is coming with War Within. Uh, people who've been paying attention over the course of Dragonflight have checked out our uh, battleground blitz, our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated battleground format. 
we're happy to move to that as a default for how rated battlegrounds are going to work. Oh, going snap. I think we're really excited to make that battleground experience that personally I've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP, that larger scale, more cooperative, objective based, um, you know, collaborative, competitive setting as opposed to the deathmatch style in arena. So, to make that more accessible to everyone your who, you know, loves Battlegrounds, yeah, loves PvP. Mr. Norton, um, thank you very much for the 19, overview, appreciate honestly, it. Us mm -hmm. adding a new Battleground Welcome map into the rotation, and we're excited to do more of this going forward. We're excited to have a new framework that can make Battlegrounds more central to the endgame rewarding part Well, of that's PvP. interesting. And yeah, this is just you know, the beginning of a new chapter. Another feature in The War Within is hero talents. We've been having a lot of articles talking about them. What are some of the other things that we can expect with the hero talents coming forward? Well, I can say there can be no more blogs and articles releasing hero talents because they'll be there for you to jump in and play. And I think that's, you know, the most I assume you get thing. alpha so access. Thanks, the Ian. For all of the feedback and discussion <laughs> in recent months. Assume you get into the, the alpha. first blog in December. This really helped us shape this central feature of how people's class gameplay is going to evolve. Um, you're going to see hero talents that you haven't yet seen for the trees that we haven't discussed previously. And for many of the ones that we have released, you'll log in and see changes that are directly shaped by your feedback, uh, by what we heard loud and clear in some cases about what was and wasn't exciting. Um, we, we've committed to have as many of these playable right from the outset as possible. We will have 100% of the hero talent trees available and playable not long into alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about iteration, tuning, and really just dialing it all in to make the polished experience that everyone is excited about. So what are we doing with professions no. in the world? Oh, uh, oh, oh, everybody listen. Put, 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 put your ears on, boys and girls. When we really overhaul professions in Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift in how professions were going to work going forward. So you can expect you know, new recipes, different enchants, but the same fundamental sort of progression and structure to professions that you saw in Dragonflight. One big okay. piece of fe feedback that we heard throughout Dragonflight, though, was a bit of frustration with the work order system from crafters who were just looking to complete quests, looking to skill up, but found themselves competing and often racing to grab work orders w with their fellow crafters. Um, so what we're excited to offer is a baseline availability of basically NPC crafting orders. Uh, so it could be you know, Earthen in Isle of Dorn who need a hammer made or need a helmet made, and they're constantly putting their offer, their work orders up onto the, onto the market so that there's always something for you to grab. The player ones will still be more lucrative, but there should always be that baseline How? availability if you just more want to lucrative. skill up and How? Kind of practice your trade skill. And there's also some cool potential for narrative tie-ins, the ability to have quests that now can point you towards that system because we can That's count cool. on it always being there. So. That's quite clever. If they can do some integration, be like, oh yeah, this faction is about to go to war and they need 20 swords crafted. Or, you know, it could even be like a seasonal tie-in sort of turn-in thing. Uh, blacksmiths all rally up. We need to outfit an army with armor and stuff of that nature. And it could be a way to build on that sort of like material dump sort of style. Um, to purge through a bunch of uh, materials, for example. All of the crafters can rally together, bang out some work orders. I guess there's some, uh, some smart ways they could do with that, but more importantly for everybody, it means that you can level up your professions in theory without entirely needing to rely on other people actually wanting the shit that you can craft, which I guess kind of makes sense. It does make... It does make it does push professions back into being a little bit more of a self solo progression thing rather than it being so integral um, to like end end game gearing and whatever. But we'll see how that works. New UI would be nice. Hopefully get uh, get the love that the stable UI got. True, the 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 UI for the crafting order system I think is super basic. I don't know how many people remember from back in the Dragonflight alpha and beta days but it was about up until about two weeks before dragonflight launched the ui for crafting orders just didn't exist so it was clearly made very quickly very rushed uh, a, a fancy new ui for it would also be really cool but i well we'll see you alpha see <laughs> we'll, we'll have to send uh send 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 blizzard a a bribery package or something to maybe 
maybe give us some uh, some love there. With Dragonfly and the profession overhaul, there was also a UI overhaul. Is there anything we're going to see with The War Within? Yeah, so the UI overhaul, it's basically a continued improvements that we want to make over time. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the uh, quest bang over, uh, overhaul. So we're going to have a bunch of new icons that will make uh, what type of quest it is much more clear. One of the new ones that you'll see is one that's like we consider an important one. These aren't campaign, but they're pretty important to your character. For instance, some uh, that must do ones for your profession or ones where you're going to unlock the revival catalyst. Yeah, I think as we've leaned more and more into outdoor world gameplay and varied gameplay there, different types of public events over the course of Dragonflight, Honestly, we reached a point in Dragonflight where we just took a look <laughs> at our map and kind of recoiled in horror at the number of different icons that were there. And it was just a kind of icon soup situation that made us say, like, it's kind of at this She's point. clearly never we've installed Handy Notes. Far past the world of, oh, you just have some daily quests or world quests here. We need a clearer visual language. And so, really excited to just evolve that central interface that players use to log in and see what there is to do in WoW on a given day. So, that covers the War Within. And the alpha is starting extremely soon. Pretty much working on getting it stood up as we speak, <laughs> as we sit here right now. And yeah, so the way this is going to work is pretty similar to the Dragonflight alpha for those who, who followed that. We're really each week, each new build that we release, we're focusing on a different piece of War Within to concentrate player feedback and our attention to just really it get all well that feedback time. in and maximize it the It worked quality. really well last time. So we're going to start off zone by zone, level band by level band. This first week is going to be the Isle of Dorne, level 70 to 73 or so, the dungeon and delves there, as well as universal systems like Hero Talents. With successive alpha builds, we'll move on to other zones, other portions of War Within. I'm inviting more waves of people. If you haven't gone to the website to opt in yet, that's a great reminder to do so. <laughs> um, we you know, really pick from, really, true, there's no secret to it. We're just randomly pulling lots of folks in and hope to get, by the end of this, countless people into our testing. Um, good, good. Once we've gotten through all of those rounds of focus testing, we'll move into our beta phase, which really is an end-to-end -end holistic test of War Within from 70 all the way to 80 and the does the game beyond. work and throughout you know go feedback, and break it. bug reports suggestions all of this is instrumental mm -hmm. to helping turn what we have now into the finished product that we want to be the best it possibly can be for all of our players later this year thank you so much for joining me for the war within and thank you for joining us for this really this is one of the most exciting times ever for the development team when we get to pull back the curtain and welcome you all into this world that we've been building in the last few years so can't wait to see you in the alpha and can't wait to hear all of your feedback. Really looking forward to everyone checking out what we built. Thank you so much. See you guys in the alpha. Dun dun dun. I, you know what? That was a 28 minute video and I don't think I paused it more than three times. I, 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 uh, I excelled myself there, you know? I think we did a good job there. There was some, um, Admittedly, there was a lot of what we kind of already knew, but th this was uh, this was an interesting to get at least a little bit of a sneak peek of what happens the in the. Or so yeah, it seems to be that your warband bank you can kind of throw a whole bunch of stuff in it. That definitely seems like some sort of recipe or something. So maybe it's uh, quite literally anything can go in there. Wait, the first tab was 25k. I thought it was 5k. The, the tab costs are as follows. Tab 1 is 1k. Tab 2 is 25k. You can see here that they've already got the first one unlocked. But they are... They are... Of, of, of insufficient funds to go much further. But yeah, the, 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 the 3.1 million gold... 3.1 million gold for a full five tab warband bank is um whew, spicy me to ball. I uh, I quite all, well I know for a fact that it's already causing some some outrage. Even the devs aren't that rich. Yeah, exactly. Even they've not got that splash that ca that cash to splash. Um, but hopefully this can be sort of, you can utilize this, you can put like catch up gear in, in one, you can put materials and whatever in another and you can organize this how you wish and upgrade it as far as your bank balance will allow you. But 
Small loan of 3.2 million gold, please. Yeah. Well, there's 96 slots. It works similar to the guild. So there's 96 slots per tab and there's up to five tabs you can have. The reality is, is that most people probably don't need all five tabs. But at the same time, if you have 60 alts and you're playing the game quite a lot I'm, and, and you're a bit of a if you're a bit of a hoarder of stuff anyway 500 slots you know is less than what you could fit in a single guild bank but that's for your entire account now maybe some people might have to go through and put some stuff in the trash who knows yeah scale back on what they put in there learn to bin things if you're somebody that needs all of the tabs you're probably a mega profession person already with a lot of gold in theory yeah if you have 60 alts 3.2 isn't a lot though well assuming that you are putting those 60 alts to good use um, there's lots of people that have lots of alts and are absolutely broke and the reason they're broke is because they're trying to gear up 60 alts and do mog on all 60 characters and stuff. You know, it works both ways. Some people have lots of alts and have a lot of gold because they have lots of alts and they use them for gold making. Others are piss poor because they have 60 alts. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, no, your warband is your full account wide. There's, there's no 10 character limit or anything. No, that's incorrect. That you're, 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 in your brain, the best way to think about warbands is to replace the word account with the word warband. So you can have up to 60 characters on an account. Your warband can in turn then be up to 60 characters. Um, this warband bank will allow you to be a localized storage space for all of those characters. Reagents can go in here as well. Then any of those, ca any of your characters can craft using the reagents from the war from the reagents uh, in the warband bank. You will still maintain your own personal character-based reagent bank and bank space. The warband bank is like the the localized one for all of your characters to use and share. <sighs> Um, there is, yeah, the, the, uh, the login screen is where you have four to five characters. Where did, the, where did they show that? It was shortly after this, wasn't it? Uh, the login screen is, oh, they didn't show it with the interface over, or did they at some point? I don't know. Well, anyway, you have, um, you can highlight up to four characters to show in your login screen of your up to potentially 60 on your account. That's the only real restriction in place. You can only have four like highlighted as such. But that's quite cool. That's quite good. Um, what other ones did I want to have a look at? Uh, oh, Mr. GM's interview with Holly was one that might be worth taking a little bit of a poke at. Having a little bit of a looky looky at. Um, I saw Mr. GM was quoting that it's uh, it's not so much War Within focused, more of like a developer Hello, update thing. Hello, welcome back to another sort of a um, sort of overall talk about things more than anything else. Make sure you uh, make sure you're subscribed to Mr. GM, by the way. Very cozy, wholesome, felt like a nice, cozy chat. Yeah, that's... Ev, ev, you'll find that everything is, like, very serious at the moment. Everything's super serious. Um, but I suspect that a, a bit more of a chill, relaxed chat is worthwhile. Let's have a little look, shall we? Uh, developer interview. We're here with Holly Longdale in London. Yay! Holly. <laughs> we were just talking about this off, like, off the camera. What do you do here? Yeah, what, what's, what's your role? What do you do? I'm the executive producer of World of Warcraft and vice president. Vice, vice president. Yeah, I, I love that. Sounds fancy. Um, so, we're going to start off with a, an easy one. Uh, welcome to the UK. So, sorry about the weather. It was beautiful <laughs> on Sunday. Uh, on Sunday, yeah. Like, so, like, Southern California, <laughs> where it was beautiful every day. 
Uh, I mean, it's been rain, it rained there just while I was here. It so rain. British. No way. It's true. I don't believe it. Apologizing for the weather, yep. first well, thing. Okay. Um, yep. <laughs> how's the jet lag? Um, extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful, isn't it? Um, it's a thing. I now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the trips. Twice in a I month. I know. I know. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I can do it. Yeah. Um, but more than happy to be here. It's been really awesome to, you know, spend time with you. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing to have you, like, in you and uh, Maria over just hanging out and playing the wall within. And we're finally here. We're finally in Alpha. Yeah. Launching soon, very soon, hopefully. Um, oh, nearly, so nearly late. Extremely soon. Probably Nearly by late. the time this is out. Who knows? <laughs> we, um, do, we are doing things a lot quicker. Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. It's. <laughs> um, which is actually, first question, look at that. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel? So I guess kind of going back, we'll start, you know, Dragonflight. How do you feel like uh, the pacing and content of Dragonflight has been? It's been super quick. You know, we've had a bunch of stuff. Which we'll go into a little bit more. Finish so press, we'll just get to all the small talk. Certainly, we'll start to discuss uh, yeah. How do you yeah. feel about the pacing and how has it been content wise for, for Dragonflight? Um, so, it was the beginning of our journey on, you know, what does it mean? We, we gave ourselves the target of the eight week patch cadence um, with varying amounts and types of content in each one. Um, it's certainly been a journey. Um, we learned a lot with each one. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think now we're going to be focused more on how do we make it sustainable for the team and how do we make it sustainable for our players yeah. as well? Um, so we're taking everything I think the patch learned, cadence worked pretty um, well and then in looking at what we, we now take steps to measure, uh, expectations. We set goals. Um, so for something like Plunderstorm, we're like, okay, this is a bit crazy. A bit novel. Let's set some goals and then see fun, how though. it performs. Uh, and it outperformed our expe expectations. So great. Yep. Uh, and we'll do the same thing with a remix uh, for Miss. It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's been a learning process. And I think, you know, we have to get a little sharper to help the team and also, you know, be able to create discoverable content. There's plenty of stuff that was, you know, I didn't know that happened mm -hmm. because I, it wasn't surfaced yep. well enough. Um, so, you know, on our journey, uh, we'll improve like those what? things. what? What she hid? Uh, is yeah. she, is she maybe talking about things like, like... She, do you think she's maybe t referring to things like the, the whelpling daycare thing that was kind of just like, if you didn't spot that one quest knocking about in Valdraken, you might have completely not even known it was a thing. Is that maybe sort of what she's referring to about sort of highlighting and showcasing some of the things that turn up from time to time more effectively? I know it's something that I almost completely glossed over even be a th being a thing. It wasn't until I started digging through the achievements and looking that, well, hang on, there's a lot of stuff here. There's like a month's worth of dailies and all that sort of stuff, so... Maybe maybe uh, advertising S when they do release some stuff, you know, making a big bit of a bigger song and dance about it might be might be a smart move. Isn't the alpha already released? No. So the story is is that a bunch of people were able to play it for a few days. They they were all given uh, like accounts pre 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 alpha ready accounts by Blizzard. Um, to play and record footage for and do whatever they wanted to do with for a few days um, until yesterday when they were allowed to make the, that public and known. Um, and now everybody is just in the waiting game with their fingers crossed that their personal accounts get flagged so that we can all dive back in and do some testing. There's so many different versions of WoW now. Like we yes. are, we have Season of Discovery, Cataclysm coming up. We've got um, obviously uh, Classic Era, Hardcore, uh, <laughs> Dragonflight, and now like every Alpha and Beta going at the moment. Um, how is it? How and like is the team pretty excited about everything World of Warcraft related? Yes, Good. it's a lot as yeah. you point out. Um, but I think we're really fortunate in that we have healthy community to support it right so if we were in a position where we're healthy we release something Let's and nobody go. showed up for it um you know i think we'd make some adjustments yeah um but we are seeing our world of warcraft 
and its engagement. Um, we're breaking all the rules. Um, some people may have seen some interesting data that may or may not have been shared oh, by so my boss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the story is so much different and it really is listening. So when we talk about season of discovery, that's a direct reaction to what the community has asked for. We look at hardcore. It's something the community did themselves mm -hmm. and we supported it. Um, Copy so paste. We're Yoink. now moving on to that in the modern game. So yep. Delves is a reaction to that. Warbands is a reaction to that. So uh, follower dungeons as well. Yeah. As so we're starting to... Who would have thought it, right? This sounds absolutely bonkers, right? But who would have thought that actually listening to your most avid fans of your game might be a good idea? <laughs> crazy right actually madness to think that you know what these people that have probably been playing your game for upwards of 20 years might be the person people worthwhile listening to um true but hardcore is now dead well the um that that you know the hardcore thing was I think one of the things that I mean Holly's also just you know relayed this that maybe they didn't make enough of a song and dance about the fact that Hardcore went live, right? Um, if they had done fresh, dedicated servers, um, paid a few creators to play it on Twitch for a few days, they could have, you know, they could have thrown some marketing budget at that and it probably would have had a lot more life to it because it was clearly a big thing when it was like, you know, the community driven add on that had the potential for it to be a big thing, but maybe it was just kind of, you know, missold by them deliberately, or they didn't make a big enough thing about it or whatever. I know hardcore solo self found was just like the biggest flop I think we've ever seen. Right. Like they, they, they just kind of made it a game mode and nothing happened i didn't i didn't see a single person playing solo self found even though it was like on the roadmap it was meant to be a big thing sort of uh, at least they you know had the intention of making it a big thing to learn listen evaluate data we do a lot of that now we've broken our players down into segments that we've we'll broken our players to, like if it's a casual we've got a mid core which is really mid -core. fun yeah i know oh. it's really fun because there's some people that do casual and they 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 think they're casual but they're kind of not okay <laughs> um yep and then all obviously to hardcore and then when they play is it do they really invest right before the next expansion or are they invested when everything's released and towards at the end of the expansion into the next yeah. one. So we've got all this data and we realized a lot of things. Knowledge um, is power. Where we're always going to provide what the player expects. Our current active players, like what an expansion means, but we're also adding to it because we had underserved audiences, mm -hmm. which are the casuals and to some degree uh, mid-core. Mid-core. <laughs> I know. You're a <laughs> casual, right? Yeah. That. <laughs> me yeah 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 me all too. day right what do we reckon that definition of mid core is is it i i think i am probably the ultimate definition of mid core i absolutely must be right i play this game way too much um yeah i'm definitely what you'd define as a mid somebody who plays the game a lot but doesn't live in you know mythic 25 dungeons or you know or isn't playing for echo i i suspect that's kind of like if you're playing the game i reckon they're probably that they if you are playing the game at least daily uh or at least three or four times a week you're probably almost automatically considered a like a mid core player you know I think many of your audience might also be that mid-core type. I, yeah, I think I, I think I agree with that. I think I agree. I think a lot of us here, you know, we'll dabble with a bit of Mythic Plus here, there. We might do, you know, the heroic raid sort of thing. You might, you know, focus on getting ahead of the curve before it goes away sort of thing. Um, but you are equally not sweating it out um, when, when patches launch and stuff. Casual raider in a nutshell, EverQuest term. Okay. Being a hardcore professionalist is still a hardcore player. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. 
doesn't matter. These tags don't really matter, but it's just interesting the fact that they are breaking. They are like behind closed doors. They are like saying, right, this is the kind of player that does sort of this. They are putting in those uh, categorizations. I'm just a degen, just a sweat lord. <laughs> casual, casual, mid-core, hardcore, sweat lord, Asmogold. That, that's that's the hierarchy, right? Yeah, I remember when we chatted before, we were like, we should play we together. I think we should I wish do we're... dynamic poetry writing as people walk by with their character names. I love that. Okay. There was actually, I think there was some new quests coming up which actually referenced some poetry, which I think is fantastic, but... uh. I'm well, I, I, I will I will interject a little question, actually. Yes. It would be nice to play together, but... <laughs> oh, you're going to go into the EU <laughs> NA thing? Yeah. Is that... Is, it, it's probably very much a technical hurdle, as well as, like, latency and everything like that, I could imagine. Don't is give them excuses, Dan. Like Don't give do them excuses. At some point, potentially? I think, yes. Very. Um... Now that you've, I mean, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm already, I'm doing the producer thing while I'm going through my head, like, yeah, going through potential solutions for this, because there's also, um, you know, there's regulatory things too that we have to be very mindful oh, yeah, of, of course, as yeah. we're global. Um, so, um, still though, you've now presented me with a problem, and it's my inherent duty as producer to try and solve it. Confirmed, it's happening. Can't wait. <laughs> Midnight, it's going to be region wide. Oh, we're going we're gonna to be delving into quote glass, oh. clipped and yeah. shipped. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be glorious. Um, you raise a good point. <laughs> um, does the kind of going back to the kind of you know, many versions of WoW, does the release schedule of these games and the versions affect each other? So, do you feel like that, you know, like let's say Cataclysm is coming out at the end of May, I believe, like would you kind of have like a you know, a kind of leeway in regards to like, we don't want to put anything else out during that time. Is that kind of the thought process with that? Um, 100%. I think what you're saying yes. is it should be, you would imagine, right? Yeah. I mean, it's been okay at the moment. There is a lot of wow going on. but it... <laughs> For you, I, we appreciate that, that for creators right now, it's, it's been... a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> or a very or profitable a time. <laughs> yeah. Um, or making so, um, bank. I think it, yes, it is a lot. Um, I'm we spent a lot of time problem. thinking about it. So when we went to Twitch Prime, uh, Twitch Prime, BlizzCon, Twitch Prime. and we were talking about Cataclysm, um, and at the same time we announced Season of Discovery, that was very deliberate because we know um, historically Cataclysm is a bit of a controversial one. Yep. Um, and we wanted anyone who felt like there tickle wasn't going to be a home tickle, for tickle them dread in wings classic, toes. that we wanted to deliver Season of Discovery as an option. Here's another home for you. Mm -hmm. Um so, Deathwing, you know, sorry. I don't like to say uh, too often that we're strategic, but we are. We care very much that players have somewhere to go. Um, so, yes, when Cataclysm comes out um, and then we're heading into the War Within, we are at least fortunate that those audiences don't, we're not cannibalizing there. They're very unique, as I'm sure you know. The classic audience loves classic yep. and their communities um and there isn't a lot of crossover with modern so we're not uh too concerned about that it's more about we do want to make sure that our expansion that's interesting that for holly to say stuff. right that's it uh, do we think that there's more of a crossover like i sense that a lot of like long-term retail players will make the move to go out and test and play classic do, but do we think that there's a huge percentage of the community then that plays classic yet has no intention of ever touching retail that 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 might be it might be more of a one-way jump rather than a two-way thing if if even holly's stating that the, the the you know they don't feel as if they're cannibalizing a single audience because they practically consider it to be two it's interesting I'm breathing room yeah. and so you have a minute <laughs> to even yeah. be able to cover it all so yeah we do think about it yeah it's I will challenging. I will say as a primarily like modern game player season of discovery has been phenomenal it's, it's you're playing it? oh yeah it's so good <laughs> I love it I, I I'm a big fan of vanilla anyway and just having vanilla with all that you know extra things going on and all the 
mystery behind it and and things like that which is a kind of a brilliant segue we will get into war within i do i did want to ask about 10 to 6 because that was such a thing on twitter <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was it was a crazy beginning of the year with the teasing and everything like that obviously um do you feel like the secret patch and keeping it a secret and all that kind of stuff kind of panned out the way you planned is that nope. something we could <laughs> Nope. All right. <laughs> no, because uh, <laughs> the teasing that we did, that wasn't a plan. Right. I was just like, you know, I'm not I'm not a big uh, tweeter. Mm-hmm. You tweet a lot, though. Yeah, it An seems exa, like it, but I not. Technically. I mean, um, I'm certainly not very verbal. It was right. just, uh, you know, big guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it took on a life of its own. And then we overplayed it like right. way, uh, way too long. Lesson learned. I'm happy to say <laughs> that yes, you know, we could have done better. Would it have been better to say nothing at all? Maybe. Uh, yes. Maybe there'll be someday we try that too. Yeah. I think we are. I'm. We are way more willing to take risks right now because yeah. a lot of them are working. Certainly, they won't all work. Yeah. Um, and that that's an example of one that uh, you know. Yeah. Go I think they were very very lucky with 1026 that plunderstorm was actually really quite cool if you can for one minute take your own objective opinion of plunderstorm away and just look at it subjectively that of all of the like random patches and random events that we've ever been given in world of warcraft plunderstorm was very very good I think they were super fortunate that this kind of like make it a secret, don't tell anybody, but then tease people about it for months and months. Um, the only reason I think they got away with that is because Plunderstorm was quite cool. Uh, if it had turned up to be a Hearthstone portal nothing burger, um, I think the world would have gone mad. <laughs> the, the the forums, I mean, I, I know Plunderstorm got, some negative press anyway but that's predominantly by people who are like i don't like pvp i'm not playing it i don't want this in my game but that's an you know that's an opinion that's like subjectively though i think plunderstorm was a very good addition to the game even if it wasn't for you i think it was it was definitely a risk to not do anything with it like in regards to like announcements and things like that i enjoyed it i had a really good time on oh, good. um obviously being time limited you know, people think about, you know, um, where does it go after that? I, know, I think the announcement was recently that it ends on April 30th. Could we see any sort of version of Plunderstorm Return or something similar, potentially? Sure. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why it's limited time is it was the design will not support a longer term. Right. So, you know, we've got Renown 40. When you're done, for some people, they're like, please don't ever let me, like, I don't want to play that again. Mm -hmm. I got my m mount. I'm good yeah um but for a lot of people that's a style for them to play now they like it's a snackable piece of content yeah. um snackable content so that's we're a gonna term. learn we're gonna do a lot of you know retrospective on it mm -hmm. um and see uh, really measure the player behavior and what worked what didn't yeah. and then you know i it's certainly not impossible to see it come back again that's mm -hmm. kind of the point right? yeah um that we can take these experiences improve them do a spin and see what happens yeah yeah, that's true. And I, I guess that's like a, an experimental team of sorts, right? I believe Orlando's involved with that and uh, a few it other used people. To be. Now it's just real. It's a oh. live team. All right. They're just, they're it's not experimenting true. anymore. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, experimentation. No, it is experiment. Um, and they've got a giant list of um, crazy things they want right. to do. Um, but yeah, it's it's Jeremy's team. Orlando is on that team. Okay. Too. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, I really think that Mr. GM Dan was trying to give Holly a bit of a because I, I can sense where he was going with this, right? He was going with the concept of that this is a separate team so that it's not taking away from, you know, uh, it's not the, the retail Plunderstorm didn't turn up instead of doing something more retail. Um, <laughs> this is why you should let the interviewer finish the question. You know, when you ask that team, you know, I yeah. spent time with that team and said, hey, your remit is go wackadoo. Yeah. And they're doing that. Yeah. I guess bringing it back to the War Within, is there, is there surprises that on. we could see during the War Within? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, definitely. You mean of the like, remix? Yeah, type, like obviously WoW thing. remix. Yes. Yeah, things like that. If it's working, and you'll see mm-hmm. more of it. The reception of remix has been extremely right. good. I loved it. I thought it was. I I looked at this and I'm like, I want this to be leveling. <laughs> so good. <laughs> did you get in on the PTR? Oh yeah, really? I was there. I did an extra evening stream because of the time difference, and it was uh, it was fun. I loved it. I, really? Because in, in essence, it's it's crummy time, but it's kind of put on its head, and there's all this other things going on. And then at the end of the day, you still get a character out of it. You get that level seventy, and it goes into uh, into the live game. Yeah. Um, because part of your warband. Exactly. Yeah. All that. All those things you did during Pandaria are now gonna gonna be in there. And I think, yeah, like experiments like that are exciting and i the reception was i didn't see a lot of negative at all I know. Like, and i just think that's phenomenal I mean, storm, right on, on the internet <laughs> I mean, we knew to have so say, little we, negative yeah. we knew that it was going to be polarizing but still fun is fun so uh for those people who fun to... <laughs> yeah we didn't and there really... were many i will add we didn't we didn't really talk about war within i'm gonna do one more because we have to wrap it up apparently <laughs> I could be here all day talking about wow. I love wow. It's Great. The best. I love that. <laughs> um, what are you most excited for in the world? I feel like this expansion She's gonna say made Delves, isn't she? for me. Like we talked about being casual players. Oh, yeah. Like Delves is my jam, follower dungeons and the level up. I, you know, I was one of those people. I would go through the level up. I don't mind soloing. I play with my husband a lot. Um, I also play with my stepson. <laughs> And she and plays World of Warcraft. I just want to be able to spend my time with them and not navigate, you know, other people's uh, preferences and so on. And we're kind of goofy. Yeah. So being able to participate in the campaign and do dungeons with followers and not feel like I'm missing out on the story and the journey, um, that's magic to me because I'm more on the RP mm-hmm. casual side. Um, so this expansion really speaks to me. I also <laughs> really love the high stakes you have the benefit of having seen basically the map of all the cinematics and i'm so i know <laughs> i'll give you my email <laughs> <laughs> um really excited it really open. is high stakes um there's a lot of really poignant things that are going to happen um that i'm excited about and i think Ominous. hopefully you will be too amazing well that was holly longdale in london <laughs> and we chatted about wolven very briefly but thank you very much for your time i appreciate it oh no and thank you so much for coming and uh very excited to be here and hopefully we'll see you in games in some way we'll try and solve that yeah, problem we'll, i'll see i'll see you on the alpha you will yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed uh, right thank you thank confirmed you. invite for dan confirmed invite <laughs> uh that was actually that was a really good for my perspective that was a really good progression for mr gm that style of interview seems to work much 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 better for him rather than having like a set list of questions must say this must say this must say this that casual interview process was pretty good um obviously not too much war within content there so much uh but a good little interview all the same well done well done well done we like that we like that um, what else have I got on my what list? Al- <laughs> students video. Um, students video predominantly because he might talk about something gold making esque. Uh, let me just quickly see if there's a. Whoa, hang on. Hang- there it is. There it is. <laughs> I was like, hang on. We're a minute into the video. He's not plugged his guide. What's going on? Uh, I knew something was up. Is it 50% off with code the war within? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. Um, two nerds having a Campbell ca- casual conversation about stuff. I think that's the, that's the best part of it, really, isn't it? Two, that, that's, that's a good descriptor there. Two people just uh, having a chat bring- about stuff and just, you know, how things have, how things have gone. Um, Plus, it didn't feel overly... This is one thing I will say, is that Holly seems to have a more... How how would you describe it? A more real persona. Um, Ian has PR nailed, right? He is not ever going to say anything that he shouldn't say, and everything sounds incredibly rehearsed. Um, I love the couch too. <laughs> Casting couch. <laughs> it's it's that couch has seen some shit. Um, 
Ian is a trained dog. He, he, he's he's got he's got the PR nailed right. Absolutely. Holly seems to feel it seems to come across as if she's going to give more sort of like real answers, if you know what I mean. Uh, uh, Nagura has named the stream the Alpha tonight. Oh, I mean, I think we practically know that Alpha invites will first phase of Alpha invites will probably go out this evening. Um, I would assume. Keep your eyes on your inbox would be my guess. Uh, that said, if your account does get flagged for Alpha you often don't necessarily get your email stating so first. Your battle.net client just updates. But I suspect later on today you'll be able to uh, check for updates and see if you're lucky. Couch was probably used for the very first Blizzard interview ever. Maybe. Maybe. For a lot, they already had Alpha, but the servers went down and will be back up again today. Uh, well, I, I believe the content creators who had been playing it for a few days were given separate accounts by Blizzard. Test accounts, per se. It wasn't flagged on their own personal accounts. <clears throat> Bobby's old couch? If it's Bobby's couch, it's probably seen. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Um, Hello what else there, have I got back. in here? Uh, I, I, can't, I can't leech all of Mr. GM's content. That's just mean. Um, we can't leech everything, can we? What have we... Look how spammed my inbox has been with, with videos. Um, login screen. The alpha's here. Who have we got? Has anybody got any suggestions? We've watched... Uh, the War Within first look at Alpha, Signs of Kalani. It might be worth having a little bit of a look at this one. In fact, he's done a, he's done a more recent one, hasn't he? Account-wide everything, Warband features. Should we see what Kalani's got to say about Warbands? Um, let's have a little look about what's hey going folks, on here. Hey, folks, this is Kalani. Oh, because this is actually... Oh, look, this is actually some of his footage from playtesting it for a little bit. So we might get some more interesting, like, uh, bank sort of stuff. Let's let's throw a link out to you guys for this. Hey, folks, this is Kalani. Yes. Kalani, playing multiple characters or alts in the war with... Hang on, can I have some pixels, please, YouTube? Why does YouTube refuse to give me pixels half the time? Hey, folks, this is Kalani. Playing multiple characters or alts in the War Within expansion is going to be completely different thanks to the new Warbands feature. Warbands introduce true account-wide progression into oh, the I'm game, in the so you're earning and unlocking things for your account or Warband instead of for individual characters. This means your progress will never get reset just for changing characters. You don't have to grind through the same systems for each character you want to play. You can transfer currencies between your alts with the snap of your fingers. There are massive changes to how transmog collecting is going to work and you can even gear up your alt characters while playing your main. Playing alts truly will never be the same again. So let's go through everything we know so far about the new Warbands feature coming in the War Within expansion. Oh there goes Brandler. Before you jump in be sure to hit up that Must like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. The first thing you'll notice related to Warbands is the new character select screen. Instead of each character having their own background, your four favourite characters of your Warband can share this amazing camp space, which is a much nicer way of displaying your favoured characters. This favourites list can be made up of any of your characters in a region, from any realms, or even from cross-faction. You can change where each character appears by changing their order in the list, so if you want someone to be on the left or the right specifically, you can tinker around with that. And okay. you can very easily drag and drop different characters into and out of your favourites list. Now at launch we're only going to have four character slots in this menu, but we could see that may be expanded upon in the future, so we might have a whole roster chilling around a campfire by the end of the War Within. 
A recent blue post also mentioned that the dev team are working on building more of these scenes for us to collect in the future, which is fantastic news. Imagine completing achievements and then unlocking a character screen backdrop related to those selfie achievements, camera. or maybe clearing through Use a the raid and then camera. getting that raid as a backdrop. Honestly, the potential here is kind of endless, and I can't wait to see what they come up with. Now, it's something just that wasn't in the alpha Use from what the I saw, camera. but it is included in a recent blue post, is that the new character screen will also present you with a lot of information about each character, including their realm, their class and spec, item level, current zone, professions, mythic plus rating, some of your rated PvP ratings, and how much gold they currently have. So if you're searching for an alt with all of your gold, or you've forgotten which character has Four each gold profession, capped this new info could in be your, very useful in your indeed. Where this system really starts to shine, though, is with the new account-wide progression focus. Almost everything will be account-wide, or warband-wide, instead of being character specific. The most highlighted progression feature that will now be fully account wide is your reputation or renown. Oh, Bran has 50 levels factions, of reputation. These types of content are now account wide. Every character on your account progresses together and has the same level. It doesn't matter if you change characters partway through a patch or level. Hang on, I forgot to put like, he speaks so fast, even though English is my native. Sometimes I'm like, what did he say? up some alts later on down the line, you won't have to restart a renown grind ever again. This is going to be huge for anyone who loves to play more than just one character. This warband progression will also start to apply to older expansions content too, so we know that a lot of Dragonflight reputation and renown will be warband wide when the expansion goes live. It may take a bit longer to work our way back through each expansion and add those reps into the warband feature, but eventually we may see every single reputation and faction in the game, old and new, tied to your warband. So how Hopefully. does this work if you play multiple characters? Does that increase the amount of rep you can get because each one earns rep through quests and storylines? Not exactly. No. Quest rewards are actually going to be different for the first character that completes those quests. So there's a first time bonus for the character that completes a quest for the first time, and there will be other rewards or bonuses for any other character that goes through the same content. The first bonus reward is usually where you're going to get most of the rep, so doing the story again and again across your alts won't really make a difference because it's that first time you complete content that means the most. Now I know many players familiar with rep grinding may immediately think <laughs> so we diplomacy. should always do the first quests on a human character to get that sweet sweet 10% bonus to all rep gains, right? That makes sense. Which is probably why the dev team are removing that racial. So humans will Rest no longer get a bonus to rep gains and that racial will be reworked into something else. This is for the best to keep the playing field even and let you play whatever characters you want to first. Warband progress can be found in more places than just the reputation and renown grind. A part of the new Delve system, which we'll have a video on shortly, includes leveling up Brown Bronzebeard as your trusty companion, unlocking new abilities and trinket slots to change up how Bran contributes to your adventures. That uh, so he has his own skills and stuff, and presumably by the looks of things, he's going to get much stronger as he levels up. We've already seen a sneak peek that there's 50 levels for Bronzebeard. So you might, I really hope that there isn't the requirement to level him up f so that you can be able to progress further. Didn't they say there was five like difficulty tiers potentially for these delves as well? Um, I hope that it's just something that he, you know, he, he passively levels himself up, up as time goes. I like that he's got feign death on him. Oops, got aggro. Better let the player handle that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Oops. Let's get out of here. That leveling up process is also warband wide, so you only have to do it once and you can contribute oh, to it. He has on eight any levels character. of abilities now. After a player uses a major cooldown ability, Bran summons his loyal Griffin companion to bombard near enemies for significant damage every one second for 10 seconds. It can only occur every one minute. So some of his abilities seem to be tied in pretty uh, tight to your abilities as well, which is quite clever. It's going to feel a little bit like multi-boxing back in the day. <clears throat> Are we going to push for them to make professions account-wide and not character-specific? Learned that special leatherworking recipe way back in Classic. Now all your leatherworkers will have access to it. Um, I, I, I think that it's about time for it to go in that direction. We were talking earlier about how it's going to affect sort of... Um, 
how it's going to affect professions like uh, Dracothist, uh, for example, cooldown stuff, transmutes. How is it going to affect those? Uh, it could be that the cooldown on those recipes is a warband level cap cooldown as opposed to a character cooldown. So it doesn't matter if you unlock the Dracothist recipe on one alchemist. It doesn't matter if you go out and learn it on 50 alchemists. Uh, you will still potentially only be able to craft X amount, you know, per account. Um, but that would allow them to sort of uh, be a little bit more free and open with, okay, you've reached this renowned level. Well, any of your relevant characters can go get the recipes now. Uh, the days of refarming and regrinding through systems seem to be behind us. Another massive swooping change for the game is going to be for transmog. With warbands, you can unlock transmog for every armor type regardless of what class you are playing. Right now in the game in Dragonflight, you can only unlock the transmogs for the armor type your class uses, so mages can only unlock transmog for cloth drops. That is all changing in the War Within. You'll be able to earn the transmog appearance for any gear that drops even if your character can't equip it. So no matter what class you are playing when you get a piece of gear, you'll be able to unlock all almost all of the transmog options for them in the game, all you have to do is get your hands on that piece of loot. The only exceptions that we know about so far are class specific items, but usually class specific items can't drop for anyone else anyway, so that probably won't end up being too much of an issue. It's also worth noting that this only applies to collecting the transmog, you still can't actually transmog your cloth armour to plate armour appearances, but it will let you collect a lot more transmog for your alts that you might not play quite as often. Now one super key point that needs to be highlighted is that transmog unlocks will be retroactive and will include items you previously could not unlock a transmog for. For example, if you have some plate gear sitting in your bank on a mage, you can't unlock that transmog right now in Dragonflight because it's not something your mage can use. All of that changes in the War Within, so as long as you keep that item in your bags or bank until the War Within launches, you will get that transmog with all of these huge changes at the same time. Perhaps one okay that's does that open up the opportunity for people to do some transmog farming ahead of time i mean i guess it it allows you to in theory fill your banks <clears throat> fill your banks with uh with, with with loot if there are certain items you want the appearance from one of the most important items for this kind of retroactive credit is the Tusks of Manoroth. Only plate wearers can unlock that transmog, but not only plate wearers can actually get the item. So if you've gotten the Tusks in the past on a character that can't use them, and you've just refused to get rid of them out just of principle, to great them. news, you will unlock that transmog as we head into the War Within. Cool. Your Warband is also going to get its very own bank. All of you alts will have access to this bank. Hey, he's got new materials in there, look. There's some of the new materials. You can also see that those new materials do have quality on them. <clears throat> I have a whole bank full of hopeful transmog for when this happens. I've got Baron, Baron Rivendare's two-handed sword stored away on a mage. It's probably, uh, yeah, it's probably if you've got any sort of like particularly rare stuff. <clears throat> I've also heard that uh, Creve, the ATT creator, has tusks stored away on a clothy. He will farm 29 days and have it all sat on the mailbox once he knows the pre-patch date. <laughs> yeah, that's clever. Yeah, that's clever. If you do it within 30 days of the patch going live, then you can just mail it all. You can just, uh, yeah. Although that doesn't really help you particularly much with uh, any soulbound stuff. Although, if, is, it still the, is it still that if your inventory is full... They will automatically go to you in the mail. Yeah, don't loot it and they come to you in the mail. Yeah, yeah, that's that's maybe a, a sneaky twist. By default, so if you want to keep materials or items I'm in here... I'm trying to pause it when you uh, need. This is the perfect... Hang on, let me see if I can tactically pause... Your warband is also going to get its very own bank. All of you also have access... Isn't there a frame by frame skip? No, not 10 seconds game. Isn't there a frame by frame skip on YouTube?
which buttons is it that does frame by frame? Gathered by players with herbalism can be bought and sold. Quality, still. Storm dust. Access to this bank by default. Alright, whatever. Shift or comma. Yeah, I think I found some buttons that do it, but I think I've broken it. So if you want to keep materials or items in here that your alts will make use of or need, this is the perfect place to store everything. It's also just an amazing expansion of available storage space for anything that isn't soulbound, which should free up space in your other storage areas as well. This is also where you want to store your warbound gear, so any alts who might make use of those items can just withdraw them as needed. We'll talk more about warbound gear in just a moment. You also seem to be able to craft straight from your warband bank. Oh, here we go. The alchemy page. Uh, wow, that looks absolutely copy-paste from Dragonflight, doesn't it? No, like, literally no question. Literally 100% copy-paste. Uh, 100 skills, 3 slots for your profession tools, inspiration, resourcefulness, multicraft, still there, recipe skills, qualities, qualities of materials, absolutely copy-paste. They probably copy-pasted the memory leak too. <laughs> it's a good chance, yeah. Absolutely good chance. Siege in six minutes, by the way. Thank you, I appreciate that. I might go do that if we can get through this within... Okay, we've got more than six minutes left. There's, there's no rush, but thank you. Um, herbalism, alchemy picked up. Cooking, fishing, archaeology. All the same. So as long as you dump all your profession materials into your warband, still three you'll be able qualities of materials. Draw from it whenever crafting on uh, experimentation, perform a risky experiment with thirty herbs of your choosing, potentially discovering new recipes in the process. You still have undiscovered recipes to learn from experimentations. Coreway catalysts. Okay, this this seems almost practically one hundred percent copy paste, doesn't it? wonder if the profession tool slots are specific to each expansion or only three overall and then having to store hundreds of tools in the bags over the years. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. It would be nice if they retro... Oh, yeah, I wonder what they'll do about that. I mean, I guess that's one of the first things we could potentially sort of start poking holes in if and as and when we get access. On any of your alts, which is a really nice touch. Now there are quite a few tabs you can purchase for your Warband Bank, up to 5 from what we've seen on the Alpha so far, so you can unlock a lot of space to store all your stuff. It's not going to be free though, in fact it's going to be quite expensive. Your first tab starts Cash out with just 1000 Okay, he's placed that right in the corner where I am. We've all seen this before. If I move out of the way, you can still see the totals. 3.126 million gold. I should have gone the other way, shouldn't I, really? Think about this, Matthias, think about this. So, mad level monies, right? Crazy expensive if you want this. There's a, I, I would be very surprised if those numbers don't change, you know? Um, but, yeah, cash monies. Uh, I can see myself messing up and crafting some of the Dragonflight stuff. For a mog that I'm missing, then forgetting to put on putting on the the war within gear and wondering why I'm not getting my bonuses. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thousand gold, not too bad. But then we rapidly start increasing in price to 25k, 100k, 500k, and the last tab is currently priced at a whopping 2.5 million gold. So if you want to unlock every tab in this new warband bank, under three percent of my gold, a total of just <laughs> over 3.1 million gold. So a lot of potential space if you have the funds for it. I imagine these prices may be reduced over time because 2.5 million gold is kind of crazy, but maybe that's the point. There's a lot of gold floating around the economy. Maybe this is designed as a large gold sink to try and address that, but it's maybe not the right place for such a hefty price, in my opinion. How do you feel about all of this extra stuff? It's about as optional as you can possibly get, though, isn't it? Like, the, like if you really don't want to spend two and a half million gold on 96 bank slots, then, well, there's an easy solution to that. 
don't spend two and a half million gold on 96 bank slots. Um, <laughs> it is 26, over 26,000 gold per slot. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, right? That's uh, the last bank tab then. On the basis, let's say you're uh, 20, 20 bucks for a token. One tenth on 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 uh, on team NA. One tenth of a token. Each slot is like two dollars for the last tab. <laughs> Twenty six thousand gold per slot for the last tab. That's quite that's quite funny. Storage for your alts being locked behind a large gold paywall. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. The Warband Bank also lets you deposit gold, so instead of mailing gold to individual characters when you need a few extra pennies on your alts, you can just dump a good chunk of your gold into the Warband Bank, and then when you need some, just withdraw it straight from your account-wide stash. I would have preferred to see gold become simply account-wide, where all characters yep. can pull straight from the same pot without having to deposit it or send it anywhere, but I guess the Warband Bank is still way better than mailing gold back and forth. Yes. Now, while gold seems to be the only currency you can deposit into the Warband Bank, there is a way... In fact, thinking about it, is it better? Is it better? I'm not entirely convinced that putting gold in your Warband Bank and then going and getting it on your own is a better solution. By proxy of the fact that there is more mailboxes knocking about than there is banks. In a way, that's actually kind of backwards. Um... The, the, in a way, that's actually a backward step, personally, for gold. Because now you're going to have to, on the character... I, I think people will still resort to just sending it via the mail. Um, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it... I, I think it's... Uh, it's 50-50, isn't it? It could... In, it would be probably... It's different if you can pull from the Warband Bank's gold reserves for other stuff. Like, the two things I can think of straight away is repairing your gear and transmog costs. If those two things can be paid for directly from the Warband Bank without you thinking about it, great. That means the amount of gold you probably need on your individual characters is very minimal, unless they happen to be, uh, uh, you know auction house andes right the, the the concept is probably you can keep all of your gold predominantly in the warband bank it's a convenience thing isn't it really i guess um or just use your personal guild bank that's also more accessible yeah especially if you've got the 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 ability to just drop down the guild bank toy thing I would also argue it's easier to mail most items than dismounting and walking to a bank. Mm. Yeah, it's it's mm. it's personal preference, I think, a little bit, isn't it? way to transfer other currencies to your other characters in the War Within. Certain currencies that are used for war band wide unlocks, so the best example of this would probably be Dragon Isle supplies for the current expansion, you'll be able to straight up send those to another character. None of this buy a box to mail to your alt to open on an alt and get 90% of what you spent on the box. It's just going to be a new menu that just lets you pick a character, type in how much you want to send, and boom, that alt now has enough currency to do whatever you're wanting to do with it. There is absolutely nothing that could go wrong with this system. <laughs> absolutely nothing that could go wrong with this system. I so hope that they test this thoroughly. Uh, this feels like it's absolutely open for just not working the way it is, you know, meant to. I so hope there's no bugs or issues with this. The only, because, you know, there's one thing, like, the... The art of going to an NPC, buying an item, sending it via the mail. Every step of that progress is very solid. Um, picking a character, picking two characters off a list, typing a number and pressing go. Then logging off and going onto the, the character and hoping that it's just worked. I so hope this is a solid system that's not bugged. Um, and I, in a way, I hope this is kind of... 
a stepping stone to making things like fully, fully account wide. Since it doesn't make a lot of sense for me for all of these currencies to be held on each individual characters in the first place. And if you, if you're, for example, it's still kind of frustrating. I mean, it's cool, right? But in in terms of things like Dragon Isle supplies, you are. How are you going to do it? Like, there is often times where, let's say, there's something that you want to buy for fifty thousand credits. You've got ten thousand credits on this character, ten thousand cred credits on this character, ten thousand credits. As long as you can do from any of your characters see the resources that any of your other characters also have. And uh, as long as this, so then you can go, right, take this amount from this character, this amount from this character, this amount from this character. It would have been 100% more easy to deal with if all of these currencies were just account wide and not individually stored on each individual character still. But there's clearly a reason why they didn't actually make currencies totally account-wide. We're probably not going to find out what that reason is, but I suspect there's definitely some reason. There's a toy that lets you access your Warband bank, but the problem is, is that you get it from the achievement of unlocking all the slots. Oh, really? Oh, that's funny. Oh, so if you buy the fifth bank tab for two and a half million gold, then you get the toy to be able to access your warband bank. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, maybe that's why rank five is so goddamn expensive then. Oh, okay. That's funny. You're pulling currency to your active character, not sending it. Okay. E okay. Either way, it might mean that, you know, if you've got, if you're trying to buy something for 10,000 credits and you've got a thousand credits on 10 different characters, you technically have enough credits to buy the thing, but then you're going to have to go through 10 different characters, transfer it all to you. It's a lot, it's a lot of busy work to shuffle around all of your currencies again, where the, where the true ease of use scenario is that every time you earn a credit it just goes into your warband right isn't that kind of the concept of warbands that it's meant to take a lot of stuff that you could in theory you could still have personal shit your flight stones for example is a is a you thing it's a character your flight stones can still be on a character you're probably not going to transfer flight stones particularly too much and even if you are there's going to be a tax on them um, but I, I don't know. I'm sure there's some logistical issues here to why they've done it this way, but it still seems overly complicated when there's quite clearly a better solution. They've put a lot of time and effort to create a complicated solution to something where there's a, it doesn't take a genius to work out what the better solution would be. So there's got to be a reason why they didn't do that better solution. Why is there a tax? Well, they've stated that there's only going to be a tax on certain currencies. Um, stuff which is predominantly... I think the way they described it was things that are predominantly going to be for, like, your pets, your mounts, your cosmetics, your collectible stuff, right? The equivalent of, like, Dragon Isle supplies. Stuff of that nature, there's going to be no tax. You can freely send those currencies to whoever needs them. If there's, like, actual player progression kind of stuff, there will then still be some sort of tax to emphasise that it is better to get that currency on the character that needs it um, rather than just funneling it all from like a main character or something um, this, this 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 currency side of things is the one thing about warbands that makes me feel it's a bit weird it's almost as if they're making the system it feels like the system's being made more complicated than it kind of already is the only luxury being really is that you can just do it from your currency panel 
You don't have to go to different places, find the NPC that allows you to buy the box and then mail it off. Um, so in that regard, it's a touch simpler, but it's only se it only seems to be one step forward rather than going like the complete solution for me. This is probably the next best thing we could have hoped for versus an account-wide currency collection. Being able to send however much you want with no restriction, with no penalty or fee is kind of insane and I'm very much looking forward to this being in the game. Now this won't be available not totally for all true, currencies, though. it's oh, only okay. for the ones that are tied to warband rewards from what we know so far. The main exceptions seem to be currencies tied directly to player power. The two currencies that were highlighted in the blue post that this will not work for are crests and flight stones, which are probably some of the most important currencies for character progression and what a lot of folks were hoping they could trade over. Hopefully we see more progress here to better facilitate transferring those currencies when your main no longer needs them, but we'll have to wait and see if we get any more info on that specifically. It's Another well super important addition with Warbands is a new type of gear, Warbound until equipped. This is kind of like old account wide gear where you can trade it to any of your other characters, but Warbound until equipped seems to have a lot more options available because once you use it, it then becomes Soulbound. That allows this gear to include higher item levels when compared to previous iterations of account wide catch up gear. It sounds like we'll be able to use Warbound gear to quickly get alts caught up. The current Ooh, plan yeah. seems to be yeah. to be available from raids, <laughs> dungeons, and delves at the very least, and whenever you earn loot, you'll have a small woo -woo chance gear. to gain an additional piece of warbound gear as personal loot, and it will drop one upgrade track below the source. So if you're looting hero track gear, your warbound gear would then be champion track gear and usable by any class. This means that just by playing the game, you will be able to get some relevant rewards that can be used by any of your other warbound characters. Imagine clearing through the raid on heroic and getting some normal normal raid gear you can just send to any of your alts, or progressing through Mythic Plus and getting gear from a few tiers down of Mythic Plus keys. That is insane, and will be yet another reason to That's level cool. some extra characters in the new expansion. You There's a weird thing about this, right? If they get this item system right, if they get it so that every time you loot a piece of gear, there's a chance of getting a second piece of gear that's uwu gear, and of one tier less, you might actually find that some sort of like hardcore single player Andes, you know, people who have only ever played one character particularly, will end up with like almost complete sets of slightly lower down gear, which might in some ways actually emphasize more players to go, you know what, I've got an entire set of cloth gear here, or the best part of an entire set of cloth gear. Maybe I'll finish leveling off that mage and, you know, test out mage this season. Uh, it, it might actually even work in that regard, rather than it being like just the just just the you know the people that already play lots of alts as a as a nice bonus. It might actually give people a good reason to try and level alts as well. You could technically gear up an alt to a high item level without ever really playing it, which isn't something we've seen before in World of Warcraft. The blue post also mentioned that Warbound gear could drop from other sources as well, so keep an eye out while playing through the expansion. The details isn't this for how Warbound Final gear Fantasy specifically does it, seem quite uncertain still, so a lot of this may change, but right now isn't it seems it, like... Uh, not that I really got to the end game in Final Fantasy XIV, but isn't it very much the same as that, so whereas if you are doing something, you will get Get, you, you you will get items sort and there is almost no restriction on how you use them or something this this feels like a system that's been stolen from somewhere it feels very borrowed from somewhere it's smart and I, I i like it i like the fact that you there's the chance of getting like a second piece of gear that you can then throw over to an alt like an amazing option to earn loot for your other characters while playing your main the Warband system also changes how achievements are going to work moving forward. Instead of being partly account-wide, the achievement system will be entirely account-wide, so you'll be earning achievements for your Warband instead of for your character. This is also reflected in your achievement points. Currently in Dragonflight, all of your alts can have drastically different achievement point counts because it's based on character-specific achievements, but in the War Within, your achievement points are Warband-based, so no matter which character you're running around on, you'll get full credit for your achievements and be able to proudly 
display those achievement points. Up, this also makes earning difference. achievements across your account much easier in general because it doesn't matter which character you're playing. Your progress is for your account now, so you can pick up a few achievements on your paladin, a couple on your mage, and one or two on your hunter, and you'll have full credit for those achievements on every character. You can also share credit for all of those achievements as well, so if you have an achievement which has a long list of requirements, you can get a few of them done on each character, and it will count towards the whole achievement. Apparently, over 2,000 achievements have been converted to Warband wide as part of this move, so it is a massive change for sure. Most achievement related rewards will also be account wide, so things like titles, mounts, and even dungeon teleports from Keystone Hero achievements, so you're not just getting those on one character anymore, the which makes these be a big rewards thing to far more valuable and makes me personally way more interested in actually going after some of those rewards. Now there are a couple of exceptions, like achievements that are specifically on a per character basis, like Dreaming of Worms, where it's that character that outgrows certain crest upgrades, or prestigious rewards like Gladiator achievements. There are also going to be special achievements that unlock bonuses for your warband for getting a character to max level. The achievement One Warband Mentor, The War Within, rewards you with an account wide or warband wide oh. bonus experience buff for every other character oh, you might want cool. to level up and play. It's a 5% bonus to all XP gains, which is amazing. Every character after your first max level will be faster, no questions asked. No gold requirements, no random extra activities to unlock, no upgrades to purchase every patch just get a character to max level. This is what heirlooms should have been all along. Doesn't this stack as well, isn't there? I, I, I vaguely saw something about this. Isn't there like five levels to this as well? That by the time you've got like three or four alts at level 80, you'll have like a flat base 25% XP boost. Or something. If somebody can find more info on that. I've seen something about that already. It's not just one achievement though, there are five ah, Warband Mentor achievements in total, and they all <laughs> seem to the give video, an extra 5% bonus to XP gains. So if you get five characters to max level, every other character on your account will be getting 25 bonus experience while leveling up, just because you already have some max level characters. That right. is amazing. <laughs> and right then. Multi-box five accounts, day one. That's how we're going to do it, right? Multi-box the first five accounts, day one. Boom! Instant 25% rep bonus for the rest of the characters. Job done. Smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. it makes me really excited for leveling alts in the War Within. Now there are some other achievements for max level characters too, but these ones seem to be retroactive, so they aren't limited to just the War Within max level characters. Dragonflight characters should count as well, unless this changes sometime in the future. But the Dynamic Duo achievement is one I want to highlight, which many of you probably already have. All you need to do is reach max level with two different classes. This achievement has been oh, updated to reward you with a Warband Bank Distance Inhibitor. This item lets you open up your Warband Bank from anywhere, giving you full access to Three it for 10 hour minutes, cool so you can withdraw or deposit whatever you want from anywhere in the world. The only downside is the three hour cooldown item, hour but cool the achievements down? for getting three and four different classes to max level have also been updated, and they reduce the cooldown on your remote war band uh, bank. So the more classes you get to max level, the more remote access you'll have for all your alts in your war band bank, making that system even more efficient and I useful. I wonder what that cooldown goes down to, there are also some to, other though. achievements popping up due to the new focus on a Account wide progress, including this Algarian Dungeoneer achievement, which requires you to complete every dungeon on Mythic difficulty as a tank, a healer, and as a DPS. Oh, Not only do these out. achievements reward the folks who play multiple flip characters or roles, but it also incentivizes you to make use of the Warband feature to level up some other characters and try some new classes or specs or roles. Warbands just make playing alts easier and more accessible, and between the experience bonuses from getting to max level and being able to quickly gear up up with warbound equipment, this will probably God, be the most accessible fun. alts have ever been. So having achievements like this is feasible for once, and it's a really exciting change. From three hours down to two hours fifty there, minutes. Though, there are a handful <laughs> of other things which will be tied to your warband instead of to your character, like flight paths. In the War Within, you only have to unlock each flight path once. As soon as you've unlocked it the first time, every other character will have those flight paths available right away. Waiting so to see some healer from quest mythic runs on quest stream on then. Alts without having to run around and pick up every flight path again Look, on every single character game, you want to play. Relax. Curiously, map 
exploration will not be carried over immediately. The reasoning for this was that map exploration is fun for some people, and uncovering all those little nooks and crannies and completing your map is cool, but it also provides other bugs. One's in chat if uh, exploring the map is cool. <laughs> Dead silence. Tumbleweeds. Bonuses like experience, which you might not want to automatically opt out of, so it won't carry over passively. But there will be a new toy available called the Warband Map 2 Everywhere All at Once, which reveals all sections of your map that a member of your warband has already explored. So Good. your map exploration is functionally warband wide, it's just See, there's only a there's only a one hour cooldown on this, right? There's only a one hour cooldown on, on, on exploring the entire continent of the game. Yeah, there's a three hour cooldown on accessing the shit that you already own in the bank. Okay. So you get to choose whether you want to rediscover areas or not. And then the last thing I want to highlight as we wrap up this video that went on way longer than I intended, but that's just how big warbands are, is that while warbands are a war within expansion feature, they're also an evergreen feature. This will be built and expanded upon as the expansion unfolds, but also carried forward into the rest of the World Soul Saga and beyond. This is the new foundation for how the game will be built. Everything we've played up until now has mostly been character-centric, so moving towards an account-centric focus is a massive shift and you can already see how it's changing how gameplay elements are built and how we're going to interact with the world. It's super exciting and I can't wait to see how everyone reacts to it when the War Within eventually launches later this year. But that's everything we know about the new account-wide progress feature Warbands coming in the War Within expansion. What do you think from what you've seen so far? Does this make Sounds you want cool. to play more characters Sounds in the next cool. expansion or will you still just stick to a handful? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. Hello. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, to all of our members who are on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I'll see you next time. Boom. Boom. Good effort that. Good effort that. Solid video. Give it a like. Give it a like. Yeah, so to round things off for the day then, I think, warbands are looking kind of quite cool. There's a lot of um, a lot of interesting aspects to warbands, especially for players like myself, in terms of that you are going to... It's going to open up the account-wide access of stuff. It's going to make, in theory... We, I, will, I will hold my ultimate judgment on this until I've had a little bit of a play with it. But the in theory, the currency thing is going to be better suited or made at least somewhat easier. Even though I do still think a truly account-wide currency system would be way easier for everything. Like it's the, 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 it would cut out all of the busy work of transferring stuff about, but maybe there's technical reasons there. Um, the Warband Bank looks cool. I think it's good. It's a big package. It's one big package of like quality of life stuff, which I think is very, very welcome. And it shows the direction that they're, you know, they're, they're now leading into the fact that people have lots of characters rather than it feeling like the people that have lots of characters are a burden to Blizzard. You know, they, they would rather you just play one character and that every time people play multiple characters, it causes Blizzard a problem. And it's, I think it's good that they're leaning into the account-wide stuff more. Um, but boys and girls, I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, I'm hungry is the honest answer more than anything else. I need to go get me some food. Um, we've had a big flood of new people following today. There's clearly a few people stopping by. Uh, I appreciate all of the follows, the bits, the subs, all of the good stuff. Thank you very much. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow being Friday. Um, I like to keep Friday relatively open to do other stuff. Um, but the reality is, is especially if Alpha goes live, especially if Alpha goes live, uh, it, will be, it will be very World of Warcraft focused again tomorrow. But... Thank you all once again. Enjoy the rest of your day. We should probably find somebody to send you all over to. Who's online right now? Who is online right now? 
Is it going to be one of those where there is practically nobody online right now because there are people out there that know things and everybody's going to be online this evening instead? I wonder, I wonder. The, uh... The, uh... Let's see, shall we? Let's see, let's see. Back from London, Alpha waiting room. There's lots of, uh... There's lots of similar channels of that nature. What's, uh... Towley's on his four hour long starting soon screen. I would rather not send you all over to a starting soon screen if I can get away with it. Uh, well, um... What's going on over here? What's going on over here? Might send you over to Erosium. Some of you might have seen Erosium on YouTube. He's another gold maker. He does some gold guides and stuff on, on YouTube. He's live right now. He seems to be doing some diamond runs. Um, we'll send you over there. We'll send Erosium some love. Why not? Share the love. Let's send you all over that way. Um, obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I can't do raids particularly on YouTube. You'll have to make your, make your way over there yourself. But Twitch will send you over that way. Let's uh, send you that way. Share the love. Right. All set. All set. Enjoy the rest of your day, boys and girls. Thank you all once again for stopping by. We'll be back again tomorrow. Have a good one. Peace. Done there. Okay, so we'll kill these lot.